Hey everybody, so what you're about to hear is a rebroadcast of a podcast that I was a guest on last week. The podcast is called the Matt and Matt O-Scale Trains Podcast. The hosts, Matt, Matt, and Johnny, they had me on as a guest, and they also had Ryan Kunkel from Lionel on as a guest. And together, we all went through the new Lionel 2022 Volume 1 catalog page by page, and we got Lionel's input and my input as well as the two Matt's and Johnny's input, and we had a whole lot of fun. It's a really long podcast. It's about three hours. What I've done here is added screenshots of the catalog to make it a little easier for you to follow along as we go through the entire catalog. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. We had a whole lot of fun doing it. If you like the Matt and Matt O-Scale Trains podcast, feel free to check it out. It's a lot of fun to listen to. I'll put a link to their podcast in the description below and in the video as well. Anyway, without further ado, here is the Matt and Matt O-Scale Trains podcast where the Matt and Matt crew, Ryan and I, go through Lionel's 2022 Volume 1 catalog. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 34 of the Matt and Matt O-Scale Trains podcast. I am one of your hosts, Matt Rochford, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, Matt Suzuha and Johnny Nugent. Matt and Johnny, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing great, man. I, I'm this. Uh, this is going to be our best one, buddy. I and, say it a lot, but I'm excited. I really am. Hands down, I am. I am giddy. I'm excited. This is going to be one of. Well, this is going to be one for the books. This is going to be amazing. I'm so hyped. I agree. I'm really excited for tonight's episode. Uh, let's go through a couple of our normal kind of uh, maintenance items, though. First, uh, as always, you can find the Matt and Matt podcast on Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube, and also Amazon Music. So um, I also wanted to mention, uh, again, our Discord server, which now has over 45 members, and it's growing every day. Now, this is a public Discord that anyone can join, uh, but you do have to acknowledge that you read the rules since we are a community server, and that's a little different from a private server on Discord. So uh, we have a great group of moderators who always make sure that folks are treated with respect and keep our community safe. Now, I will place a link to the Discord in the show notes, and all you need to do is just click on it. Uh, if you, you might have to create a uh, Discord account. Uh, if you do, you'll be um, added into the server. You can introduce yourself and then start chanting away. So we hope to see you in there. If you have any questions about this, just please feel free to reach out uh, to any of our social links and let us know. So uh, another item, of course, is our Matt and Matt merchandise. Uh, again, if you want a coffee mug, a shirt, sweatshirt, uh, anything with our logo on it, um, obviously I'll put a link in the description for you. And if you use our merch code, which is M-A-M-P-O-D, you will get 10% off. Now, Let's get started on tonight's episode. Uh, we are going to be reviewing the Lionel 2022 Big Book Catalog. However, we won't be alone on this adventure tonight. So we have Mr. Ryan Kunkel from Lionel, who will be guiding us through this catalog. Now, Ryan, I always enjoyed your catalog reviews with Derek on the Notch 6 podcast. And of course, um, I... Uh, enjoy your Workbench Wednesday videos on YouTube. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Well, thank you very much for having me, uh, everybody. And it's a, it's really a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed doing these with uh, with Derek uh, some time ago. I'm, I'm glad to actually be back doing them again. Uh, thank you for the, the plug for Workbench Wednesdays on uh, on YouTube and Facebook. That, that saves me a shameless plug later on. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, and very much looking forward to it. Uh, so I'll, uh, this will be a, a, an early run through for me and I'm anxious to see some of the, the first feedback from, from fans and, uh, and everybody out there of how we did with our, our next catalog. Excellent. Now we also have another guest, kind of our surprise guest, and that's none other than uh, our friend and returning guest, Eric Siegel from the Eric Strains YouTube channel. Eric, how are you doing tonight, sir? How's it going? Doing good. Really glad to be back. Had a lot of fun last time. And just like you guys, I'm really super stoked about uh, tonight's show where we've got uh, got the new 2022 catalog 
to look at and, and talk about. So this should be a lot of fun. It's always a sort of an exciting time when a new Lionel catalog drops. So yeah, really excited to get going with it. Awesome. So we have, uh, we each had the catalog in front of us and uh, I will try to announce the page numbers as we move through the book for those listening at home uh, with your own copy of the catalog. Now, Ryan, perhaps you can tell us a bit about each product, why you decided to add it to the catalog, and then we can go around the room with uh, with questions. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, then let's get to it, folks. Let's go ahead and start on page four, which is probably, at least for me, uh, one of the most exciting items in the catalog. Uh, well, no doubt. Uh, this is this is big news. Uh, with the uh, announcement of the new Lionel Base 3 and Cab 3 app, uh, this is really the next generation in the evolution of Lionel Command Control. And while it may not seem uh, like a major jump right now, uh, I think down the road we'll see this as the equivalent of moving from TMCC up to Legacy. Um, the, the Base 3 has a lot of things going for it, uh, and the Cab 3 app also has a lot of advantages over either the, the apps we've done before, our Lion Chief app, uh, or the iCab uh, it combines the best of those and expands upon it. And uh, the Base 3 gives us a platform uh, with that really to, to build off of and move forward for, for several decades to come now. Um, as you all know, Legacy and TMCC have been around for a long time. They were uh, early, uh, early pioneers in, in model train command control. And uh, that technology, we, we've really taken that about as far as we can push it. Uh, but we have other things that we'd like to do and, and more features we'd like to add. And so it's time to start the, the design and the phase and then moving into that next, uh, next stage of, of command control. And that's what, what Base 3 gives us. But uh, unlike a lot of companies, you know, you, when the new cell phones come in, the old cell phones last for a little while and then they're gone, right? Same with computers and so forth. We've taken uh, every effort possible to make sure that, uh, as we've done before, we, we don't leave your trains behind. So you can make this transition as quickly or slowly as you like, but the investment that you've already made, whether it's in locomotives, whether it's in a cab 2 uh, or a cab 1L um, or a Lion Chief set, uh, none of that is, is wasted. And this will be the first time now we'll be able to combine all of our current worlds, both the legacy command world, and then also our Lion Chief world, be it the current Bluetooth model or even the previous RF models into one platform uh, and have uh, one throttle that can unite them all, so to speak. Uh, this is, uh, th I'll just, I'll step in first and just say this is super exciting for me. The one thing you had me at was the, um, and I believe it's noted on the, the previous page, but it's uh, the four digit addressing which, you know, look, I don't have more than 99 engines, but I do have a lot of engines that, you know, have the same road numbers and stuff like that. And just to be able to easily identify everything on my layout as to where it exists, you know, in my, you know, in the iCab or, or even in just, you know, one of my cab controllers is, uh, is fantastic. Like, I am very, very excited about this. I am a computer kind of technology guy by, by trade. So stuff like this is like right up my alley anyway, but uh, I am really looking forward to this. What about you guys? I like it. Um, I like it a lot. And uh, actually, I have, I have a question right off the bat, Ryan, mm -hmm. is that so it says here it's compatible with everything and you can still use the legacy cab Two remote. Uh, two questions on that. The first one is if I have the uh, 993, the expansion legacy set, will that still work with this? Yes, it will. Okay. And being it's with the cab too, and I can, another thing with like the Lion Chief and the, um, the Lion Chief Plus, can I run those engines with this base three with the legacy remote? Yes, you can. Oh, sweet. That's awesome. Yes. So basically inside the, uh, inside the little Hellgate bridge there, uh, you've got a, a whole variety, a whole series of um, different radios. So you've got a Bluetooth connection, you've got an RF connection, you've got a legacy TMCC radio in there. Um, and so uh, no matter what source is talking to the, the base, it can then talk back out to whichever ever train uh, you, you want to uh, talk with. Uh, to work the 
Lion Chief engines, whether it's an older RF one or a Bluetooth one with your uh, command systems, you, there are three toggle switches there on the front, uh, and you use those to uh, help set up the, the address more than we would get into here, obviously, tonight on this, but uh, it allows you to pair up your legacy remote with a, a Bluetooth or RF um, locomotive uh, very easily. You can also still use a, um, a universal remote or the Lion Chief app and run those trains completely independent of the base three. So if you're already used to that, or if you start, if you're a newcomer in the hobby and you start off that way, you can continue to use all the things you're familiar with and then move up to the base three when you want to start adding in higher end locomotives and new features. And the base three can support up to 10 controllers simultaneously. So not only can you be running trains, but nine of your friends can come over and run trains with you too, and all be talking through the base three and out to your, to your layout. And that can be any combination of a cab two, a cab one L, um, an app on a phone. So you have lots of options for those who like to use an app on their phone, which is becoming more and more of a hobby. Um, that's an easy way to do it, but we know there are a lot of people who still just like the, the feel of a tactile remote and you can still use the remotes you have uh, or going forward we'll continue to produce the cab 1l uh, and that will, will join in as well uh, without any any issues all you have to do the best part of this in my opinion as someone who's not a computer guy not a tech guy uh, the hookup for this is just as easy as it has been since the um, the tmcc base one it's a single wire connection from the U-post, from the common post on this base to your outside rail uh, or U-post on your transformer. So if you already have, let's say, a, cab, a base two hooked up, just undo that one wire, attach it to your base three, plug it in, and you're done. That's the setup for this new system to add it into your layout. Uh, and one more real quick. On the back, it says LCS control. I have the separate sale Wi-Fi box uh, mm -hmm. uh, do I still need that with this, or is that included with this? Uh, That's unit? built into here as well. So it's one thing you won't need to carry over uh, into the new new layout. You can plug right into uh, any of the three ports here uh, on the back of this. You don't have to continue just to, to daisy chain them either. You have more options uh, here on the back with three LCS ports. Sweet. Yeah, I got to say, this is pretty sweet. I'm pretty stoked about it. I, I, love, I love the design, the Hellgate bridge design. I think that's great. Um, I do have, you know, my question, I guess, is I'm in the uh, I'm the, in the minority of people where I do have more than 99 engines. Mm -hmm. And um, and so what I'm curious about is with the four digit addressing, is that something that's going to be sort of rolled out into future, loco not just vision line, but future locomotives? Or, you know, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if I've got more than 99 locomotives now, can they be fit into the base three more easily than with, uh, than with the current systems? So right now you're still limited uh, with the TMCC legacy engines to those 99 addresses because it's a different uh, bit of hardware in the locomotive as well as right. in, the, in the cab three or base. Three okay. That's, okay um, that's what I figured. That will become a standard as we move forward. We're going to introduce it, and obviously this, this year's Vision Locomotive is the first out. Um, and But we'll continue to roll that into uh, locomotives down the road as well. Uh, it won't become mainstay uh, probably for another year or two, um, and we'll continue to make locomotives um, with legacy uh, remotes, uh, with legacy boards and uh, for, for the foreseeable future. So none of that is, is going away anytime soon, but this is definitely the next uh, wave of the future to get you that four-digit addressing. And I'm glad, Matt, that you mentioned it. it it's a great feature if you if you are like Eric and you have a, a, a great collection uh, to be able to sort things out. But even if you don't, uh, just the convenience of being able to give every locomotive hopefully a, a unique number uh, or if you go to a club and you've got multiple people uh, running together, it, it can really um, come in handy, handy quickly. You never have to remember, did I use the last two digits of that number or the first two digits or, you know, it's, it, you just put the four in and, and go. So I think it's, it seems like a small change, but uh, once you get used to it, it'll be very welcomed. And uh, while it's one of the things we're rolling out now, I, I want to emphasize that with the, with the cab three, especially, we will have even more options that we're, we're still developing and, and still constantly working on. This is um, 
not the not the end all of, of this new phase by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this is just sort of the beginning of where we're going to be able to roll out new things that we just simply couldn't do with the the existing cab two. That's wow. great. Yeah, this is the 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 first building block, right, of a of a brand new system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. For sure, and I'm I'm super excited. It's it's a brand new almost renaissance in command control for the age of I know. So this is very exciting to see. Um, I, I like the symbolism. I, I don't know if intentional or not with using the Hellgate Bridge. Um, being a, a lot of the people who listen to the podcast are long term fans, Eric, and uh, something we've always wanted in the hobby for Lionel was a bridge between all the different control systems, and having the Hellgate Bridge being the symbol here, you, you can't get more spot on than that. That's absolutely amazing. That's really cool to hear you say that because you just nailed it. Uh, and this was the most of the design behind this, and especially the case and the the bridge and all that. That was Dave Olson's brainchild, and a, a big shout out to Dave and the work that he's put into this project. Uh, I think he's a little jealous that I get to to do some of the first rollouts on it because um, <laughs> it's, it's it's not fair. Uh, but um, he he had that in mind when he did this, and he really did a cool cool job of uh, working in those themes and. Uh, we wanted something that wasn't just a little black box you'd want to bury under your under your layout either. We wanted it to have some some style. Uh, we kept some of the the cues from the the base two with the light up letters and the glow lights and, and so forth. Um, so there's we did some we did some things you know to sort of carry that tradition. Uh, but the Hellgate was definitely a part of that, and it really truly is the bridge between our previous all of our previous technologies and the future of where we're going. That's awesome. Yeah, no. Um, I remember when back in the day when Lionel released their uh, their movie, uh, the featured film and all the advanced like futuristic features of Lionel with the with the design, it definitely could realistically fit in that universe. And that's kind of kind of surreal to see come into into real life. Um, but also, I like reading through the features list, and there's there's quite a lot more than we could probably get into tonight. But I also like how you guys included um, memory module support for transferring. Uh, your your database of engines from your your old legacy base to the new cab three that is uh, to the ba- that's going to be something really important and something that I really appreciate that you guys are looking out for the the veteran model railroader to bring over to the new system as well. Oh, absolutely, we want to try and make the transition as seamless and smooth as possible for everybody. Sweet, sweet. And uh, Dave, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank I'm you. I'm sure we can probably get Dave on a future podcast, and and you could probably spend an hour just talking about uh, about base three and and cab three, and you'll be hearing a lot about this from us throughout the year because we know it's new. Uh, we know that that sometimes change is scary, um, and uh, there will be a ton of questions uh, on this. So we plan on doing a lot of marketing and promotion and keeping everybody up to date. Uh, as we roll along with this uh, so that you have all of your questions answered um, and can can add this to your your layout with confidence yeah we would uh, we would love to have Dave on so I'll make that uh, make that point right now <laughs> is there a rollout of when this is going to show up we are targeting uh, by the end of this calendar year for delivery oh sweet wow awesome, awesome. that's yeah. really cool mm-hmm. this has been in development now for about uh three to five years uh, in various you know, bits and pieces behind the scenes. Um, nothing happens as fast as, uh, as you'd think it would. And it also never happens as fast as we'd like it to. Uh, so there've been definitely some roadblocks along the way. Uh, and there, I'm sure will be a few more as we go through the last, the last year, as everyone knows, has been a very challenging one uh, for anybody who puts um, anything electronic uh, in their products. And so we expect some of those woes to continue into um, 2022, which is why giving a firm date on that right now would be um, a little bit uh, uh, premature on my part um, because I can't predict the future that well. But um, we are we are through all the, the major hurdles that, that need to be addressed. So uh, it's now getting into the uh, final stages of beta testing, uh, design and uh, approvals and then making sure there are, are no bugs as these roll out. But uh, I think one advantage of this, too, is you'll see it, it will be very easy to update as we go along uh, because, as I said, this is the beginning. So we know that there will be updates, whether it's to the cab or to the base, uh, and updating 
um, through the connections uh, in this will be uh, very seamless for, for everybody. So it won't be uh, any more difficult than updating to the latest version of, uh, of software on an app or on a, on your computer at home. Excellent. Well, does anyone, does anyone have any other questions or uh, anything on the next page about the, uh, the apps that are, uh, that are shown? Uh, if not, uh, we can go ahead and just jump over to page 14 for our, our looks like our flagship product for the catalog. All right. So we teased the Vision Class A uh, back in October. So uh, not a big surprise, but this was the first time people are getting a chance to see the different variations and some of the details. Uh, if you're looking at this digitally, uh, it's nice because you can you can blow things up and, and see things closer. We also embed some videos in our digital catalogs that uh, you can pop up and uh, see some handsome guy talking about the, the Vision Class A and all of its features and its history and so forth. Um, so please, by all means, do that. Um, but uh, we've, we've got multiple detail variations here on this locomotive uh, to capture the Class A's appearances from literally the prototype up through the 1218 and her excursion years. Uh, and some of them are pretty subtle. Uh, some of them are a little more massive, like the type of tenders being used. Um, but there, there are... Uh, at least half a dozen or more different variations uh, in each of the variations that, that we've done uh, to, to make them stand out. And as we already uh, talked to a little bit with the, the CAV3 and BASE3, this will have uh, the ability now to be four-digit addressed if you're using the CAV3 uh, with the BASE3 system. So uh, a big advantage uh, for those who have, have larger layouts and something I think people will, will truly enjoy. Um, we've talked a lot about the features of this in advance, so even though it's our flagship project, uh, and I, I'm happy to spend as much time on her as, as you'd like, uh, I, I don't want to belabor the point when we've got such a long catalog ahead of us, but uh, you do have so many great features in here, including uh, the, the various smoke units, including, of course, whistle steam, but also the safety valve steam, which I think is actually one of the neater ones we've done. Uh, all the different lighting effects, the kinematic drawbar, and the um, the force coupler uh, on the drawbar, which I also think is really cool. If you're using your legacy system uh, and you're used to using that train brake to increase the labor and the chuff and the, the uh, you know that deepens that exhaust, and then you hear the, the the smoke increase, and then to lighten it off as you're coming down grade and get that coasting effect that force coupler really does all that automatically for you. So you don't have to think about it. Your engine is actually working and responding to the train behind it. Uh, and it's, it's just such a neat, neat thing that is, is so unique to Lionel and legacy to be able to have that kind of realism in your train. Um, and then, as I mentioned, just so many different detail variations, uh, which for the prototype modelers is something really fun and, and makes this a, a step above any of the, the class A's we've done before. This is all new tooling from, uh, from the ground up. The only tool that we're getting any reuse out of is uh, some of the tenders uh, and some of the variations, which uh, are similar to the Y3 tenders. Uh, so we had some carryover there, but uh, otherwise this is an all new beast uh, so that we could get all the correct features and correct details in here to make it uh, vi a vision line worthy model for everybody. Yeah, th this thing is, uh, this thing is incredible looking. And um, I, I, I did get a chance to uh, make it to York, and I did actually was able to see uh, your demo that you had uh, that you guys uh, guys had up in your area, mm -hmm. and uh, and seeing it in the catalog with all the different road names, uh, this thing is pretty cool. Now I, I am not an East Coast guy, so um, definitely not uh, you know my cup of tea, uh, but uh, I will let the other gentlemen here uh, uh, you know give their comments. I think this thing looks great. Uh, I'm really glad there's a pilot version. Uh, uh, I'm I'm kind of a sucker for pilot versions, um, so I'll probably end up <laughs> I'll probably end up getting uh, two versions of this just to, just to get that uh, the, the, the uh, pilot. So, uh, but I think it looks great, and um, I did see some video of it from York, and it, it looked, looked really nice. So yeah, super super excited about it. These are really nice. I. I'm really excited to see what these are all about. I love the different tenders, especially on like the uh, prototype with the um, Y3 with the doghouse. I really like that a lot. Um, two questions. Uh, first of all, on the prototype, there's no lettering on the tender. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, they just had a small Norfolk and Western uh, underneath the road number on the cab. Cool. And then for some of these, uh, specifically number 1238, 
it says that it has a uh, roller bearing rods and some of the other ones have the uh regular standard rods they uh mm-hmm. that is going to be how it's going to be on the uh final model correct yes that's how it'll be on the final model it's a, it's a small detail variation difference uh in the in the way those rods look uh the, the mechanical function of the rods from a model standpoint will be the same um, but it, it represents the the different types on the prototypes cool I, i'm really excited for these these are really nice i, I don't have the curves unfortunately but beautiful engine yeah these are these are amazing um and the the sheer amount of detail variety in between these models is really something that needs to to be applauded here like something that i've never seen tender tenders are a big one the different types of tenders is, is a first for o scale i think but the fact you guys went out of it a way to even change the pilots on the front of the locomotives i don't think i've ever yeah. seen that done on own scale so that's that's amazing. Uh, the Class A is a beautiful model. Even the uh, the demo version you guys had at York, which I also saw with uh, with Matt R over there, uh, I was blown away. Um, we went with a, a group of friends out there to York, and the moment that word was let out that you guys were doing the Class A was to a resounding applause. Like everyone's hyped, and I have no doubts that everybody else is, is hyped for this engine as well. Yeah, it, it's it's an engine that's been out of the market for far too long, and it's time to to get it back out there. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, I love all the different versions of this. It's really, and like he was saying, uh, with the with the different pilots, you don't see that a lot in O scale or in the tender variations. So it's really nice to see stuff getting that specific in uh, in O scale. Well, thank you, everybody. The, the design for this is pretty close to finalized. Um, tooling will be starting very shortly on it. Um, I always try and hold back a little bit in case uh, people catch th- some things after the catalogs released that that we missed. Um, because there's nothing like having 2,000 eyes on a on your project to, to help catch the things. It's it's great proofreading, uh, and I, I mean that honestly. I don't want that to sound sarcastic. Um, so we'll be starting the tooling on here fairly shortly, and again, we do hope to deliver these to everybody by the end of the year. Awesome! That's that is exciting. Very cool. exciting. Hands down. I like sure. the uh, the passenger one, the uh, J style scheme. That one's really cool too. Yeah, we wanted to do something. Um, the fantasy schemes have been huge for us in to, to my knowledge and my understanding of the Norfolk and Western, they were not a showy railroad. So doing something all red or, you know, gold or something like that, that's just not N and W. So we went with something a little more austere, a little more um, refined and borrowed the tender striping from the class J of course, uh, and then carried it forward across the cab, very similar to um, what Southern Pacific did with some of the semi-streamlined daylight engines. And I, I think it turned out really nice. I'm a huge fan of the fantasy paint schemes. I know a lot of people, you know, some people are not, but I, for one, really like them because they really give you so many different options. And, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of hit home a few years ago. My, uh, my girlfriend went down into my layout room and was looking at all the steam engines and she didn't know anything about trains and, she looked at all the steam engines and said, they all look exactly the same. They all look black, you know? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? They're not all the same. You're, what are you, you're crazy. And, but then I, it kind of hit me that, yeah, it, it to someone who's not in the hobby, it, they do kind of all look the same. And so for me, I kind of like the fantasy paint schemes because they allow you to get some stuff that, that is a little more eye catching. And, you know, when I, I have an open house for my layout once a year and it's nice to run those on the layout because people who come to see the layout, who may not be experts in what the Norfolk and Western ran, you know, they'll, they'll see the nice stripe or something and, and say, Hey, that looks really pretty. And so it's, that's why I like them. I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of them. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, if nobody else has anything else, let's, uh, let's continue uh, and take a look at these, uh, these vision horse cars. Yeah, so this is a, a neat product that builds on uh, some of the code we, we've developed previously uh, in the Vision Baggage car. Um, and uh, a lot of people probably are less aware of uh, the racehorse traffic uh, on railroads and, and their historic role in that than, than some other commodities carried. But at one point, this was actually a pretty big business on the railroads. Uh, and, and many roads owned uh, horse cars of, of various designs. So we borrowed some of the common features um, from, from horse cars. We didn't really duplicate any single roads cars specifically, um, but borrowed common features and created a, a vision rich feature car that has uh, a lot of great sound. So it's similar to the vision reefers and stock cars in which you have different loading and unloading sequences. You have sounds in the cars in motion sounds from the cars is stopped. 
And these are on a, a scale 72 foot car. So they're only 18 inches long, um, which still gives them a good prototypical length. Uh, but also makes them a little more friendly for folks with with the tighter curves. They'll do an 054 curve, um, and unlike the 21-inch passenger cars, they look a little bit more reasonable doing so. Uh, so I think these are going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure who we're going to get to record to do the racehorse sounds yet, uh, but we'll have some fun with that for sure, uh, like we did on the Vision Baggage car, some of the, the great sequences that we packed into that, uh, and a variety of road names here to um, – to meet with uh, with pretty much anyone's expectations, no matter what area you're modeling. But it's also worth noting that the horses were treated pretty well. So if the horse was going cross country, they didn't change trains uh, mid route. So it was very common to see Pennsylvania horse cars out in California, uh, Santa Fe cars um, in Kentucky. Uh, it, it didn't didn't really matter. They they interchanged frequently, and they would be added into whichever passenger train schedule fit the bill. So whatever train you're running and whichever car you like, it's a neat way to add some color and spice and variety to your, your passenger trains on your layout. Yeah. I am a, uh, I am a huge fan of all of your sound cars, you know, so for lack of better terms, but uh, you know, that, that Santa Fe one for me is as a Santa Fe, Santa Fe guy, that's very catching for me. And uh, I will be getting the Santa Fe one for sure. Uh, like I said, like all of these sound, uh, you know, cars just add so much like value. You know, I hate, you know, I hate to call it play value because, you know, look, we're all like adults, but you know, there's just something about like playing sounds and, and just kind of giving maybe a little bit more realism to, uh, you know, whatever particular train you're having going around the layout. And uh, it's just a really cool effect. And I have to say like all of these colors are, are just that, that Louisville and Nashville. Holy cow. That blue is like spectacular and uh yeah these are uh, definitely going to be on my list i think it's a great idea uh i i didn't even know there were horse cars like this so this is something this is something new to me but uh i think it's great and like you said these sound cars are one of my favorite things because they just add so much to a train you know it used to be back in the day you'd have your engine up front and then the rest of the train was pretty much just silence or maybe a little bit of clickety clack on the rails you know, but now you space these out in your train and you've got a whole train of sound and it's just, it's really, it, it just really adds so much fun to it. And especially when, when you have visitors see them, uh, it just adds so much more realism and excitement to it. And we may or may not get to it uh, because they're so far back in the catalog, but there are two Christmas versions of this as well. One will be in our red and green North Pole Central livery and one for the Polar Express and of course, those will be reindeer express cars. Uh, so, you know, those, those reindeer, after delivering all the presents on Christmas Eve, we figured they'd probably be pretty tired. And uh, this is their their easy ride back up to the North Pole. <laughs> so you'll see a, uh, you'll see right. toward, towards the back of here, you'll see the, the reindeer uh, vision cars and then also some Endor box cars to, to pair with them because that sleigh's got to go in there somewhere too, right? So <laughs> Very true. Uh, we, we've, got, uh, we've got you covered for your Christmas trains as well, which it's not it's not uh, Christmas without a Lionel train. So we wanted to make sure we had those in there. And uh, we're still trying to figure out what a reindeer sounds like, but we'll figure it out before the, the sounds get done. <laughs> uh, plus one on the sounds of cars. I mean, I got a ton of them. I got the reefers, tank cars, uh, you name it. I love them all. I mean, they are all fantastic. Uh, I'm sure these horse cars would be no exception. I love the Pensy with the olive green trucks. That is beautiful. Yeah, that really is sharp. I like them all. <laughs> kind of partial to the Canadian Pacific right now, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, those are those are beautiful. And I kind of piggybacking off of uh, what everybody said. I know everyone's kind of said the same thing, so no pun intended. I don't mean to, to beat a dead horse here, but you know. Uh, <laughs> but generally, the sound cards uh, in the past couple years have really added a lot to the hobby. Um, as Eric had already mentioned, after the, the engine's gone, you just hear the the click clack of the, the metal wheel, which is fine. Uh, but if you really want to add to the the overall symphony of sound that comes from a train nothing's more amazing than to have an engine steam engine with full labor with whistle steam start to slowly pull away and the the clanging of the couplers and the coupler slack going in the back as it goes on really mm -hmm. helps you use your imagination which is something you got to use in the hobby as well um definitely points to you guys for 
for bringing out these horse cars. It's a part of uh, railroad history that you don't ever see modeled. And how I, I didn't, how I didn't even know about the um, these being part of the uh, the history of railroading. So I'm I'm very impressed. And the SP one, me being a SP foamer myself, um, mm-hmm. I love it. So I, I I can't wait to see what you guys do with these. Well, thank you. I- as some of you probably know, I come from a bit of a, a museum background and uh, enjoy the history part of the hobby, too. So anytime I can hear somebody say that they learned something about trains that they didn't know before by picking up a Lionel catalog, that's a big win for me, personally. I, I, that, that means a lot. So, uh, so thank you, sincerely. All right. Well, speaking of uh, sound cars, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, mosey on down to page 20. And uh, take a look at uh, some more of these uh, these stock cars. Right. So from from um, Pride and Joy racehorses to to swine, we we have uh, some more uh, livestock cars here. A little bit more of the traditional variety, and these are going to be very very similar to the cars that we produced. I guess now almost two years ago, uh, or it will be by the time these these get out. Uh, with the, the cow effects inside, but we've gone to a bi-level stock car now and we'll have a pig load in there. So you get a lot of fun uh, effects on here. There will be some new tooling to do the uh, interior floor and the, the dual level doors on these cars. They'll all come in a three pack. Uh, you'll get one car with the sounds and then two other cars, which are uh, have all the details, just no electronics inside. Uh, as these these cars usually ran in in uh, in cuts, so um, you know wanted to give you a, a big value pack just to make the illustrations a little bigger on the page in the catalog. We show one three pack, and the rest are shown as a single car, just so we can make the art a little bit bigger. Um, sometimes things get lost when you you get so many things on a page. Um, but the sounds in here, you'll have um, loading sequences, unloading sequences. And what I'm sure will be uh, a favorite to record uh, will be the car cleaning sequences uh, of, of these things. Um, and the legacy system, you get the different uh, different sounds, freight sounds in motion. You'll also hear livestock. And, yes, you will be able to quill the pig um, with, with the uh, – uh, when Dave told me I could have a quilling pig, that was pretty much – that was it. This project was done. Oh, man, that's great. That is great. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be sweet. I can't wait. Yeah. I got to say, you know, just like the previous car, you know, I must have, you know, I know I'm the exception, but I must have probably 800 freight cars in my collection. I don't have a bi-level door box car. And I think it's really cool that you're bringing out stuff that's really, I, I, I've never seen this in O scale before. Um, and so I think that's great. And, and to pair it with a great sound set, that's going to be fantastic. I got to ask, do you, do you guys, are you, in, how involved are you when you, with the recordings of the sounds? I mean, are those sessions fun? Are they, are, you know. Oh, they're a blast. They're, they're a blast. <laughs> um, and uh, Eric, did we have you up to do some sounds? Uh, not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I couldn't remember we'd done that, that or not. Uh, we, we do bring in outsiders from time to time. We used to do almost all of our recording from, you know, prof- so-called professional voice actors. I shouldn't say so-called, I don't want to diminish the work they did, but, uh, in the last couple of years, we've, we've really sort of in-housed a lot of it. And so a lot of the crew talks that you'll hear now, uh, come from folks around the office. Uh, and we have a recording studio in our engineering lab. Uh, and we can go in there and uh, and run through all the recordings uh, as many times as we need to. Um, Tracy, our sound engineer, does a great job of uh, mastering and remastering things and, uh, and, and editing it all together. Um, for we, as you, you may have noticed on some of the newer locomotives we delivered this year, uh, some some different uh, crew chatter and things like that on the legacy engines and some more. Uh, more generic background radio chatter that just sort of sounds like you're looking, listening to a a radio, not specific hearing specific phrases every time. And those were all recorded here too. We just, uh, you know, he has ways of adjusting the microphone to make you sound like you're coming through a radio speaker. And uh, it's a blast. Uh, And we also are are trying to, we're trying to really vary things. Um, The sounds were starting to get stale. And so we're, we're doing a variety of things and still getting out in the field anytime we can. I know we've talked about it over the past year with Strasburg 90 uh, and we'll be heading up there when they get her uh, steamed up this spring. 
uh, to record uh, sounds and whistles. And we'll be recording uh, some crew dialogue and things like that up there too, to add that level of authenticity. So anytime we can, we can add something more to our sound library, we, we like to jump on it, but uh, it, it's a fun div- division here, diversion here from, <laughs> from the daily norm when you get to go and record sounds and, um, you know, some people we've had them and then they, they give, they'll get the train set that they're in and they'll give it to their family. And you, you watch eyes light up as they hear, you know, mom's voice coming out of the train. Cause that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I've noticed that, you know, it seems over the, over the last few years and you talked about bringing the sound in house. And I think it shows because some of the sound sequences on some of the more modern sound cars are, some of them are just hilarious and you can tell the people recording them are just having fun doing it. And that's been a ball to, to experience. And then also, like you said, with the crew talk, uh, I've noticed that and I've, you know, it, uh, in a couple, in the, uh, some reviews I've done for OGR magazine, I've, I've tried to point that out saying, Hey, you know, the crew talk sounds, I think they've gotten a lot better over the last few years. They've gotten grittier. Uh, they just sound a lot more realistic than, than they used to. I love that radio static that they're doing in the background. Now it's great. I will definitely pass all those uh, those compliments on to the the engineering team. Uh, it, it's it's fun, and we're always trying to, to new, do new things here and make the product uh, better and, and mm-hmm. in new ways. Uh, and it is fun. I mean, we 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 work very hard as a company. We we can we take things seriously, and we do put our nose to the grindstone to try and make everything as, as perfect as we can for everybody all the time. But I make model trains for a living. If I couldn't have fun doing that job, I wouldn't be doing that job right. And I, I think you, you need to have that that a- atmosphere here as well. Of It's an enjoyable place to work, and we love what we do, uh, and we see the fun in what we make. Yeah, it's, it totally shows in these sounds. And uh, I think I, I, I think it was maybe a couple of years ago, I actually started to hear, and correct me if I'm wrong, I started to hear some um, – some female announcers doing stuff in the, in the legacy crew talk sounds uh, like dispatchers and stuff. And I I thought that was great. You know, Mm -hmm. I said, you know, it's been far too, you know, we've we've gone too long without hearing, you know, female dispatchers and stuff like that in the crew talk sounds. And to hear that was really refreshing and, and just made it a whole lot more fun. Yeah. Women didn't come into the, you know, weren't a mainstay in in the locomotives cabs until probably the last 30 years or so. So we've been doing that more and more in the in the modern diesels. But uh, as tower operators, uh, women go back into at least as far into the 1920s uh, as block operators and, and in, the, in the switch towers. Um, so we are trying to bring in a little bit more diverse and, and also historically accurate representation of, of railroading. And I have uh, I have an interesting question on these um, these cars. Um, I, I actually have the, uh, the the cattle cars from last year. Uh, and uh, it came with actually uh, really cool cattle figures. So is this going to come with like pig figures? We won't do pig figures in here. And that's, it's a good question with a double deck car uh, and the slats being so small, I don't think you would appreciate the figures inside well enough gotcha. to, to include them. Gotcha. So it would be adding cost to the product that you just simply wouldn't be able to appreciate. And uh, while I know the prices are always going up uh, and there are certain parts of it that we just, we can't control if there are things I think that I, I can add, but you won't get your money's worth out of the ad, those are the things that we try and, uh, and, and hold back. Because even though it would be a fun thing to, to know that they're in there, if you can't see them, um, you know, why make you pay for them? Good, good point. Good point. <laughs> no, these are, these, these are cool. This, this is definitely going on my list for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move into uh, let's move into our legacy steam, and uh, we'll take a look at these really cool uh, two ten fours. Excellent. So this is uh, tooling that's new to us, but some of you may recognize it as former MTH tooling. Uh, we will be upgrading these locomotives significantly. Uh, of course, we had the the J one T one two ten fours in our arsenal before, but uh, having the Santa Fe two ten four is really a completely different beast, uh, and so. It's, Really glad we could pick up this tooling. Uh, you'll see some different variations in here. Of course, we'll be upgrading this with Legacy and Rail Sounds. We'll be adding whistle steam to the locomotive. We'll be adding the Bluetooth control. We'll be adding the wireless draw bar uh, tether in there. So there will be a lot of uh, a lot of pluses into this over the previous editions. We've got a variety of road names. Um, we've got, the, of course, the Santa Fe, the classic Santa Fe uh, paint scheme. Both of those numbers, by the way, for, for Pensy guys are uh, locomotives that made their way 
into the, the coal service uh, out of Columbus. Uh, so if you're an East Coast guy and like the Santa Fe power, there's your excuse. Uh, we've also got a, a what if fantasy scheme in the uh, in sort of the, the, the Midnight Chief or the, the Black Bonnet, a variety of names for that. Um, it's, it's a fun one. Uh, the two ten ten twos with that paint scheme just arrived not too long ago. Uh, a lot of people have been really happy with that. So here's another chance uh, at that paint scheme. And then uh, the Kansas City Southern had some that were very similar. Uh, we did a, uh, a version inspired by the CNO um, not too long ago on the war bonds, uh, and it sold out really quickly, and we had a lot of uh, requests for it. The, the Santa Fe Burke is maybe a little bit closer to the, the Kansas City Southern's actual locomotive, so we reran that one here as well as the uh, gray boiler version. And then since the Pensy leased these uh, as often as they did from the Santa Fe, we did sort of a what if uh, Pensy version as well, uh, changed it out to a coal fired tender, uh, but kept the rest of the details uh, pretty much the same. Uh, so you had a, a Pensy version. I got to say, I'm really excited to see that Lionel is, is taking the MTH tooling and, and running with it and adding the Lionel flavor to it rather than just doing the bare minimum and saying, okay, here it is. You know, I love that you're adding the whistle steam and legacy sounds and the wireless tether. And I think, I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm really excited to see this stuff. What, one little thing that I can, that I just want to point out that I think is very, very cool. And it may not be a big deal to others, but um, the fact that you, uh, uh, it looks like you're actually including three different smokestacks, kind of like the uh, like you do with the Northerns. Yes, yes, we'll use our same tooling that we have uh, for our Santa Fe Northern uh, to to do that here. Um, we have the, the thirty seven fifty class uh, Northern, which uh, is much smaller uh, than than this boiler. Uh, we'll be able to do the, the larger Santa Fe Northerns now in the future as well. Uh, but since we had just done the thirty seven fifties not too long ago, we figured we'd start with the two ten fours this go around. Gotcha. Uh, with, with this tooling. But yeah, we'll be using the three different interchangeable stacks so you can have that that raised stack there effect if you'd like to do that. Yeah, I, I love that. I have the TMCC uh, um, Santa Fe Northern and um, I just, you know, it's a little thing, but uh, it kind of goes a long way uh, that you just kind of include that kind of um, those kind of options for folks that want to like either, you know, be specific. Maybe Maybe they remember, you know, a Northern with that smokestack on it and they want to kind of like model it on their railroad but uh for me that's just it's a really cool thing i agree with that that's uh, it's cool seeing the extra smokestacks the santa fe northern was one of my it remains one of my favorite lionel logos and it's cool to see the interchangeable smokestacks making their way onto this as well and like you said it's a small thing but it's just so cool (laughs) exactly it's definitely a tooling that we have seen. We have not seen in a very long time in O scale. Um, being an X MTH tooling, um, we definitely got to see that at MTH, and they definitely had their fun with it. But to see it brought to the Lionel side of O scale and giving the special Lionel treatment with legacy sounds, whistle, steam, the whole nine yards, it's it's going to be amazing to see this model brought into uh, into 2020, you know, 2021, 2022. It's going to be awesome to see what you guys do with it. Um, and just to see it modernized is just super impressive. Thank you. We'll, we'll see some more MTH um, pickups here as we, we get in through the catalog. Um, and we have plenty more that we'll be rolling out bit by bit. You know, it, it takes some time to re-engineer these and, and get them up to, to Lionel's uh, standards and styles and, and incorporate things. It's not as simple as take out the DCS board and put in the legacy board. Uh, so there's there's some work that has to be done to them. But we'll re- as they're ready – We'll be introducing them into the line, so there's there's plenty of good surprises to come further back in this catalog and in uh, in several more catalogs to come yet from Lionel. I think that's a good a good way to do it. I think we'd all agree that we'd rather see the XMTH integrated right rather than fast. So I'm all for that. Yep. Absolutely, agree. Yeah, agree. Yep, for sure. Uh, Matt Z, did you have anything on the uh, the, the two ten fours? I'm excited to see what these are going to be all about. Uh, my uncle has the old MTH one, so I'm curious to see what this will be like with Legacy and Whistle Steam and the works. Um, I always kind of like, I've always liked that engine. I thought, you know, how cool would it be to have a Legacy version of it? And well, here we are. So <laughs> that's really cool. I'm excited to see what this is all about. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Burks then. 
Awesome. So we, we always get requests for Burks. Uh, we hadn't done the the earlier style, the, the A1 style Burks in, in quite some time. So wanted to bring these back around. And outside of USRA engines, there aren't too many locomotives that, that traveled around the country as much as uh, as these things did. Um, it, it's neat to be able to throw a wide variety and a wide geography of road names uh, on a project without having to make them all fantasy schemes. Um, so we, we've took some some classic road names here, um, but we've also added some some that hadn't been done before and some deco variations that hadn't been done before. Uh, and there are also a number of different detail variations on these locomotives, uh, particularly in the, the front of the smoke box uh, on these engines, you'll see some some uh, some differences from road name to road name uh, to capture the unique unique flavors of, of each one. Uh, these have all the great standard features that you're used to in Legacy. Uh, I don't want to keep beating the the drum over and over, but these do have whistle steam. Um, I think all but uh, two locomotives we'll see in this catalog have have the whistle steam effect in them, and and those are just uh, just a little too tiny to squeeze it in. Uh, but you've got the the legacy rail sounds. Um, you've got all the the LED lighting. The upgrade we made to the class lights a few years ago to make them uh, by color and changeable. Uh, so really neat locomotives. Uh, a neat compact engine. Uh, I'm kind of partial to the to the ones with those coffin water heaters uh, on the front, just because they're so ugly. They're cool, <laughs> um, but uh, they, they're all neat in their own right. Yeah, these are these are really neat. I'm I'm definitely. Uh... Definitely eyeing that, that uh, Santa Fe 4198 for sure. So I've been looking to actually pick up a Santa Fe uh, Burke. And, uh, well, now I have one in front of me. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, kudos to you guys for these. I, and especially, like, the road-specific details, too. I think that's really important, uh, especially for folks who, you know, are modeling a particular railroad and they want to make sure that, you know, hey, that that looks just like the picture does, right? So, yeah, these are these are great. Yeah, I love that smoke box on that santa fe in the southern pacific looks so cool so yeah i'll definitely be picking up one of those uh, i'll i'll take a, a hop in and and say this so while i'm a big fan of the the other burks like the nickel plate burks these engines are you can't get more industry and business than these i mean just looking at the engine there is pipe work literally everywhere you look you, you there, there's so many separately applied details on this engine that it, it's just if you want an engine that's all business for freight, you, you can't get better than this. And the, the unique details per the the road names is something that is also to be to be praised as well. Um, while I'm not a big fan of the 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 big bonnets over the the front of the engines, they're still very cool, and they're definitely they stand out from any other steam locomotive you add to your collection. So definitely kudos for this one. I really like these. I love the the ones with the cough and feed water here, especially the SP. I'm really leaning towards. I really like that a lot. And like Johnny said, the pipe work is fantastic. Whistle steam in here, which is going to be fantastic. I I've, I love that feature. I, I know, like, I'm almost spoiled by the engines that don't have it. I'm like, where's that whistle steam? <laughs> I, I, I love it. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go and continue on, and uh, we'll take a look at these uh, really cool uh, Atlantics. Yeah, so one neat, neat trend that we've seen really take off in the last uh, – about two or three years is uh, a strong uptick in sales in our smaller steam locomotives. And when I started with the company, we always heard show after show, I love your legacy steam engines, but they're all big boys and they're all challengers and huge articulated engines. And I don't have room for that. Well, give me something smaller. But the sales just were never there. And, and for whatever reason, that has really changed for us in the last, uh, last couple of years. So we've made a concerted effort to try and keep some smaller steam locomotives in, in every catalog that give you all the same uh, features. You still get the whistle steam and uh, you know, all the, as much as we can compact in there possibly, uh, but at a smaller price and, and size to fit 036 or 031 curves uh, like these are, and you know, a, a nice engine for, for your railroad. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a swinging bell on this. We did try, uh, but uh, it's just a little too tight for that. Um, but just a neat locomotive. Um, this is sort of a combination tooling between a Pennsylvania E6 um, and a Southern Pacific A6, uh, but very close to Atlantics that were on a lot of different railroads. I'm not sure if I'm partial to any one particular road name in here. The, the Wabash really has my eye. It has just the right amount of, 
polish and trim to it to be a, a classy looking locomotive uh, without going going over the edge. But uh, really a great steam locomotive uh, for small layouts. And Atlantics were the premier power uh, in the, the first couple decades of the 20th century. So uh, these will look great pulling heavyweight cars or pulling uh, some of the wood passenger cars you'll see further out. I don't see too many road names for myself, but uh, these are uh, these are really, really cool. And man, that Southern paint scheme, holy cow, that is really nice. Yeah, I'll definitely be getting that Southern. And to your point, Ryan, the, you know, I think what makes these smaller ones so attractive nowadays is that you get all the features, you get the whistle steam and the legacy sounds and all that in a small, small, relatively affordable package. You know, the prices are always going up, but still, you know, I know in the last couple catalogs, the, uh, I forget what it was, the 282 or something like that was selling really well because it was something that was, you know, relatively compact and yet filled with features. And I think a lot of people really respond to that, uh, that you can get a lot for your, you know, people want to get the most for their money. And so it's nice to see that in these, these smaller, smaller locomotives. Plus one on these small steam engines. I mean, I have the H10 from a couple of catalogs ago, and that one has the whistle steam and the swing ballot. I love that engine. That one is great. Uh, this one is a, no exception to that. The uh, New York Central is really calling my name. I really like that a whole lot. You know, any of this East Coast stuff, New York Central, Pensy, all that, I just, I love it. So really cool stuff, Ryan. Oh, yeah, that H10 was great. <laughs> Had that swing. The swing and bell is my all-time favorite feature. Uh, Me too. So it's, it's always great when I can when they, when they can squeeze it in somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, these are really exciting to see come back in the catalog, and kind of touching on the viewer points on smaller steam and seeing uh, an increase in interest in them. Um, being fortunate enough to have met a lot of folks in the hobby these this past two years, uh, meeting a lot of the younger younger folks, we're seeing a resurgence in the hobby of younger, as in folks who are finally getting their first jobs, um, going in, are in college or finishing college and really having the opportunity to return into the hobby. And with the budget and size restrained, uh, modeler, modeler and, and O scale, you, you have to go for what you can get. And these smaller engines really fit that market. And it comes in at a perfect time. Um, for example, myself, when I returned to the hobby, my first scale steam engine was actually the first ever uh, TMCC Atlantic, the Southern Pacific 3000, the Daylight. So that's this engine has a special place in my heart. And Lionel catering to that market of the returning younger enthusiast is really on the ball for that. And I, I can't praise that enough. Um, these engines are beautiful. Uh, actually talking about the engine now is like the, my favorites have to be the Missouri Pacific. That oil tender is very unique. I don't think we've seen that for the Atlantics ever. So that's really cool. And I, I gotta agree with you, Ron, that, that Wabash engine is the perfect combination of business and classy. I, I really love that engine. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, let's move into the, uh, 06 O's. All right. So here's another, um, another, uh, find from MTH that we are uh, upgrading to legacy. Uh, we we looked and looked and looked and tried and just could not cram whistle steam in here um, or the swinging bell. I was I, I even pushed to give me one or the other and we just couldn't. This engine is really quite small, um, but uh, smaller than the most of the other legacies we, we've had before. But a, a great steam switcher used by so many different railroads. Um, one feature I want to point out on here is it will not have the wireless draw bar. It will have a tethered draw bar. But we, we always do that on our switchers because when you don't have the extra wheels on the locomotive, you have that short, rigid base wheelbase. Uh, it's nice to have the extra pickup from the tender to help give you that slow speed operation and less trouble through all of your switches and things like that because that's how you want to run a switch locomotive. Uh, and also on this one, it allows us to put some more electronics in the in the tender and just make it all fit. Uh, so you will have a tethered plug on this, but um, in the case of a small locomotive like this, that's more of a, a design feature than a feature holdout is, is the way the way we do it. Um, really impressed by the the detail on this casting. Um, I love small steam myself and switch engines. Um, I think it's just a little you know, and 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 that part of operations in the hobby too uh, is is just a nice break from uh, from mainline running all the time. Uh, so I think these will have a have a great place on on a lot of layouts. 
I'm glad we finally have a really nice um, 060 in addition to the Pensy B6, uh, another nice 060 to, to add into the, the roundhouse. Yeah, that B6 is one of my favorites, and I think that has the tether as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, and, same uh, reason. Yeah, and it was a, I think it was a good call because, like you said, nobody wants to be running these things through, through your switches and have it die in the middle of a switch. So uh, I think that was that was smart to do that. Yeah, these are these are really sweet looking. Um, I, I'm definitely uh, eyeing that Frisco. That's uh, very very nice. I, I I really like that one. That's what uh, I was but, eyeing uh, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a I know there's a lot of nice little uh, steamers in this catalog, and um, I think to Johnny's point that you know that that's a great thing, without a doubt. And for those who like to model every railroad under the sun. Um, consider things like the, the terminal railroad, uh, or the Washington terminal, which are both locomotives that, that work these terminal roads in St. Louis or, or Washington, where they were serving all the other railroads that were coming in and out of town. So, uh, if, if you're one of those folks, I don't know, there might be somebody like that on this podcast who has an engine from just about every con- uh, railroad in the country. Uh, you know, this is sort of the, it could be the thread that unites them all and, and binds it all together. Oh, oh gosh! Now, now I'm going to have to get one of these too. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I think he's saying you should buy it. <laughs> Gently implying, yeah. <laughs> and it's just TRA, so it could be you know, even though it's the Terminal Railroad Association of St. Louis, I, that could be the Terminal Railroad of Atlanta. I, I don't know. It, it, it might work. It could be. I for one, I really like these. You know, I mean, I've always liked the MTH tool. Um, I've never owned one, but I've seen them and always liked them. But this, I'm excited to see what Legacy's got with this. Um, see all the uh, features and detail and all that. And I'm really excited for this one. Uh, I'm looking at the New York Central. I really like that a lot. Yeah, I've always liked, uh, you know, I've said this before, but, you know, I always liked MTH toolings and, but, you know, Lionel has always had the best sound, and so I'm real. It's going to be really exciting to see some of these really nice MTH tool tool locomotives being outfitted with Legacy. That's going to be super cool. Now, I'd be remiss not to bring this up, but you guys did a absolutely amazing job with bringing more Strasburg into the mix here. I know some some of our buddies would uh, would. Uh, but tar and feather me if I didn't make mention of 31. That is a very unique looking locomotive. The front end with the centered headlight with the, the number board on the boiler front. That looks awesome. And I know a lot of the Strasbourg fans are going to be over the moon about this engine. I certainly hope so. It's been a, a huge seller for us. Uh, that'll be some new tooling variations on this. Uh, MTH, uh, to my knowledge, never did the centered headlight uh, or that. Uh, as 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 it goes in comparison to the prototype, uh, thirty the real thirty one is is not a USRA. It's actually even more compact than this. Um, but I think with the changes to the front end, we get a locomotive that looks um, reasonably close, and uh, and will make it a nice addition for those who want to complete the the Strasbourg roster. Sweet, nice. sweet. All right. Well, uh, you didn't think we could get smaller, but uh, let's go ahead and head over to the O four O's. Absolutely. Uh, when we started off with this, this was going to be a Lion Chief Plus 2.0 locomotive. And then with the, the features that we could get inside uh, and whatnot, we decided, you know what, why not just give you the extra speed steps and, and upgrade it to, to Legacy? So uh, this became a, yet another uh, Legacy add-in um, as, we, as we got further into the, the catalog design. Uh, so we've got uh, five uh, great road names here. There's a, a Christmas version uh, further back in the catalog on this one as well, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and a real fun uh, locomotive, uh, nice little compact uh, uh, powerhouse of an engine. A lot of great valve gear on this one. We've got a couple different variations of the tooling. Uh, of course, this will be the, the more detailed with the added valve gear, uh, the nicer uh, electric headlamp, not the big boxy uh, oil lamp. And uh, a great locomotive for those tight industrial areas and, and small switching um, you know, nothing says tight curves and uh, compact spaces and jumbled up track plans like like O gauge. So this is the engine that was just designed to be made for for three rail O gauge layouts. I think. I I just I love these little engines. Um, I'm uh, a little bit uh, 
prone to that or particular to that uh, that army one. That one's really cool. I, I'm guessing that's going to be like an army green with the uh, with the gray boiler. Yeah, it's like a dark olive, dark olive yeah. green. Mm-hmm. That yeah, one's that cool. one's that one's cool. Is there no sound? Is it too small to have sound in there, or is there, is there sound in the tender or what? Well, there, there there will be sound in the tender. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I like that. It's tiny. <laughs> it is. It's. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, these are great. I, I've always liked this uh, tool, um, and I'm really happy to see. You know, either way, if this would have been a uh, LC 2.0 or this, I would have got one because I've always said if this ever came out in 2.0, I'd buy one. And uh, it's in Legacy, so it's even better. Um, so I'm re- I really thank you for this one. It's really cool. Uh, and one quick note, it's not in here, but uh, I have the 060T. And that engine, I plug this whenever I can. I love that engine. Uh, that one is fantastic as well. So if you want even smaller yet, look at one of those. They are awesome. And uh, uh, maybe wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, those are cool. <laughs> <laughs> More road names for 06 OTs. I got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sweet. Kind of piggybacking off of what Matt Z said there um, with the small steam, like, and what Eric said, with the sounds you guys are fitting in these smaller locomotives, it is absolutely mind boggling. You couldn't imagine doing that a couple of years ago. So the fact you have engines like the 060T or these 040s, and you're able to put legacy sounds or LC 2.0 sounds in there, that's absolutely amazing. And it, it brings so much. I'm, I'm really excited to see what these things sound like. All right. Well, uh, I think this was a, a definitely a great uh, set of steam engines uh, that are uh, that are uh, obviously noted in this catalog. So I think um, I think we're going to have a lot of a lot of big fans out there. A lot of people happy uh, with the amount of steam uh, with a lot of the smaller steam engines that are available. So uh, for me, I, I think you guys definitely hit a home run here with your steam engines. Yeah, I like the selection. It's a, good, it's a good good amount of stuff. Uh, nice features across the board. I like it. Thumbs up. Ten out of ten for me. Thank you, everybody. Plus one. All right. Well, let's go into uh, my favorite part of the catalog, <laughs> uh, and that would be the diesel locomotives. And uh, let's go ahead and start out with these. Uh, RS twenty sevens and uh, for people uh, with their own catalog, we're on page thirty six. Excellent. So this is a another rescue from MTH, and this was in their Rail King scale line. Um, and when we started looking at the tooling for this, originally it was going to be uh, a Lion Chief plus engine, and uh, you know, I, I kind of fell in love with it. And uh, Megan was going to do it as a Lion Chief engine. I said, no, I'm, I'm taking that one for the legacy part of the catalog. <laughs> uh, so we're going to we're going to make upgrades to this. Obviously, we'll put the legacy in there and uh, our, our smoke unit and our sounds. Uh, we're also going to add uh, a lot more separately applied details to this locomotive to bring it more into into line with the legacy family. Um, but uh, I, I'm a bit of an alcoholic, I guess. And uh, mm-hmm. this engine is just so odd and uh and and misshapen that it's it's kind of cool uh so i wanted to bring this one into the legacy stable and it gave us a chance to do a couple of road names that we we don't often often do Uh, i don't remember last time i put green bay and western on a locomotive uh for pete's sakes but uh, a a neat engine and one i think that'll be be really well received yeah, these are these are fantastic. I, I'm also uh, Ryan. I'm also very prone to anything Elko diesel, uh, and uh, these are just like right at my right up, uh, you know, my cup of tea, so to speak. And uh, there's a lot of different colors here, um, you know, just a lot of great choices. Uh, that Chicago Northwestern's uh, pretty cool. The Sioux is nice as well. Like there's there's a lot of good options on this page. Um, but you're right, that Green Bay and Western. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of so there's something about it that's kind of pulling me toward it. I don't know what it is, but that's a really neat looking engine. Yeah, this is this is nice. I like that Chicago Northwestern. I think I might I'm kind of gravitating toward that one. But yeah, I love these Alco engines because to me they kind of um, they kind of they kind of in a weird way like 
so ugly they're pretty to me. <laughs> like, they're like they're not the prettiest things in the world, but they just have a <laughs> such a special look to them that they're they're just cool. And I, I like stuff that looks different and and unique. And and these are certainly in that category. So yeah, really happy to see these. Those two line units are absolutely awesome i i love how that looks um and then as well as having the inclusion of the the black conrail paint scheme that's really cool yeah um, i like that that's that is cool right you don't see that very often so the fact that you guys went out of your way to do that was was awesome and yeah very unique paint schemes for very very unique engines yeah i like these too i, I have the penn central rs 11s from a couple years back and uh, I'm thinking I might grab either the Penn Central or the Conrail to go with those because that's really cool. So I really like that a lot. Lots of choices for everybody. Yep, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's nice that you said you're going to add some extra detail to it just to just to make it a little more in line with uh, with the standard O scale stuff. I like that. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of great stuff here still in store for us. So let's uh, let's take a look at these SW ones. All right. Here's another one that, that came out of the Rail King uh, scale line. This one, um, the the body is coming from MTH. Everything else you see here from the, the frame down and everything inside will be based off of what we've been doing with our um, our slightly larger uh, EMD switchers. So the SW7s, 8s, 9s, 1200s, uh, NW2s uh, that we've been putting out over the last several years. Um, so we've, we've got a, a great amount of sound in here, uh, single motor, uh, single motor with, with all, uh, both trucks powered through, uh, through the, the, the gear towers, uh, really great slow speed performance on these fixed pilots, which I know is a big thing for, for a lot of people, uh, I think really adds to the realism. Uh, so you'll have all of what you're used to in a legacy, uh, switcher but in the, the smaller uh, body version of the, the SW1. So it's going to be a, a, a trick getting it all crammed in there, uh, but uh, we're going to make it happen. And I think these are going to be fun locomotives. And one that I'm excited about because there is just no shortage of, uh, of paint schemes that we can, we can slap on this sucker. Uh, so it, it makes my job uh, product planning for the, the next couple of years uh, a lot easier. Uh, I don't know what it is about that flambeau paper locomotive. I found one shot of it and uh, and just said, you know, that just has character, and I want it in the catalog. So uh, we try. I'm trying to pick some some paint schemes that aren't aren't quite the norm, uh, but always you have your your standards like Southern Pacific, uh, B and O, uh, Burlington Northern that you know will help uh, carry the sales to make sure everything comes off so for those who uh who's just looking for something a little different we've got some of those those in here as well uh, and uh, look forward to, to adding this into the switcher roster yep I, I i love the i love that burlington northern i mean you can put burlington northern on a golf cart and i'll probably buy it but uh <laughs> again, I mean, <laughs> but uh um the burlington northern is great and i love that you guys got smoke in these because i'm pretty sure they did not have smoke from mth so yeah. that is fantastic yeah i look i look forward to uh i look forward to these and yeah you're right you could put like all kinds of different road names on these and they would just look fantastic so kudos on these you burlington northern yep i'm all i'm on top of it yeah i'm really excited about these i gotta say because i i just finished writing a review for the sw8 for ogr magazine and i love that engine it's got the fixed pilots i love the way they have the single motor that drives all axles on the truck on the trucks uh it's a really well done switcher and to know that that is carrying on into here i think it's going to be great i love that the addition of smoke i think this is going to be just a great little switcher i'm really excited and i, I like that flambeau paper corp one i think i might get that one <laughs> i i have to i don't know what the word is thanks throw my hands up whatever it is ryan i i your your team deserves the biggest round of applause i could ever give i've said this to countless people i've wanted this engine with smoke and fixed pilots for years and years and years i thank you so much this, this is an absolute without a doubt pre-order dude this is fantastic all the way i yeah, love this it yeah, this is just giving people what, what they want. I mean, this is yeah. what people have wanted yeah. for years. And finally to deliver on that, it's 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 awesome. 
yeah, big, big, big thanks. This is awesome. And thank you from me because now I can finally don't have to hear Matt Z make the same request <laughs> for the beers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's true i want smoke and fix pilots on my switchers that's all i want so now i got it. i could have bought eight vision line big boys with every time he if i had a nickel for every single time he brought it up so thank you for my sanity that you finally did this. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you the, the compliments do mean a lot and uh it's nice to know that um that what we're delivering is what what people want uh we, we try and listen to all the feedback that we can get uh, and do the best we can to make make people happy. And it's it's good to know that that some of the things we're doing at least are, are working. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, continue into uh, some of these really awesome looking uh, ES44 ACs. All right. So I'm sure we'll get some pushback on on some of these because some of the prototypes are the newer uh, tier four versions. Um, but with all these great heritage schemes and veteran schemes out there, uh, I couldn't couldn't resist adding them into a model. Uh, and the tooling budget wasn't there this go around to, to tool up a new body uh, and I didn't want to hold them off until, until we could. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, for some that are a little bit of a stand in, uh, the, the paint schemes will, will more than make up for it because there's some really cool uh, paint schemes here, uh, including the, the BNSF at, uh, Heritage, uh, the CN uh, Veterans Unit uh, is, is a great engine. And then uh, Pure Fancy, um, you know, we, we've done some of the uh, military themed locomotives in the last couple of catalogs and they've done real well for us. The, the Baldwin sharks and the, um, the uh, verandas uh, from, from a catalog or two ago uh, with, with the older graphics on have been great sellers. So we wanted to do something just a little bit more modern. Uh, and one of our artists is a, is a military modeler. So I sort of throw the bone to him and, and let Steve run wild with things a little bit. Uh, and we came up with the the dark sort of the the, uh, the, the night midnight uh, secret ops type look uh, here for the U.S. Armed Forces for for a pair of those uh, very cool looking uh, locomotives. And the catalog art probably doesn't do it justice. There's a lot of detail uh, and some neat stuff worked into the the camouflage uh, on these. And he did a, a tint on the windows similar to what you see on some of the the stealth fighters and things like that. Wow, that's that's for that is that is really cool. That's the one I'm eyeing. Is that is that Armed Forces one? Now I, I do like that Armed Forces ones, but I'm going to have to say, from somebody who owns three Lionel Legacy ES44 AC BNSFs, thank you for making the 25th anniversary. So, <laughs> so now I can have four. So, oh, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love I love ES44s, and uh, I really really like that EJ and E. I like that you guys are making EJ and E uh, engines. Um, it is actually one of my favorite railroads uh, from someone who lives in Chicago land. Uh, I love seeing uh, that paint scheme. Uh, I have a few, I bought the sh I got the sharks that you guys made uh, in a couple catalogs ago, and I absolutely love those. And uh, I'm glad to see uh, the J uh, show up on your pages. So uh, thanks for that. But yeah, these are the paint schemes on some of these are just fantastic. And yes, that U.S. Armed Forces one is pretty cool looking for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of eyeing that one and the uh, the Wisconsin Central. I like that uh, BC Rail. That one's really cool looking. They're all nice, really. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, they're, they're all really cool. I'd like to order seven new ES forty fours, please. <laughs> I'll take your entire stock. <laughs> now this, these are beautiful engines. I, I'm with Matt. I really like the EJ and E. Maybe, maybe it's because I've developed Stockholm syndrome because he won't stop talking about it that I like the EJ and E now. I don't know, but no, the EJ and E one is really cool. I, I love the Illinois Central one, the Armed Forces one. Just they just look so sleek and. Whoever took the photos or did the renders for you guys for these particular engines definitely deserve kudos because just that shot alone makes those engines look so awesome. I just, I'm not, I'm not the biggest modern diesel guy, but gosh, it makes me reach for the the wallet subconsciously to try to get one. So, but th these are awesome. Uh, that's that's great to hear. I should point out um, for for all but the. Um, uh, the heritage unit, the BNSF heritage, we did two powered units and one non-powered, and then we'll do two powered units on the armed forces. So those, for those who want to do a matched pair, 
Uh, and there were two different numbers of the CN Veterans Unit as well. So we did uh, two and, and one non-powered. Uh, but since the heritage units are so popular, and, and, and you all brought it up, you kind of you get hard to choose which one you want. Uh, and a lot of these we think probably end up on someone's desk or mantle uh, as a as a statement piece. Uh, the non-powered versions are there as well. So if you want to build up your roster without uh, spending quite as much money or, or have that, that fun piece, uh, it gives you a slightly more affordable way of, of doing that, uh, especially when we, you know, when CN or someone drops, you know, half a dozen heritage units all at once, it, it makes it a scramble to try and keep up. And it's one way for us to help help those who want to get, get more for their dollar. We also tried on these to match the colors to the heritage units, not necessarily the original colors of the railroad. Uh, because the Wisconsin Central and the, the J in particular, the, the orange and the red seemed a little bit more vibrant uh, on the heritage units to, to our eyes and, and everything we'd seen on them, some of the original colors. So uh, hopefully that that's uh, what everyone's looking for on these. That's an interesting point. I didn't think about that. Uh, you're, you're actually modeling the heritage unit and not the, uh, not the original colors. Yeah, these are, um, these are, these are definitely going to be a home run for sure. That EJ and E one does look sharp. I gotta say, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna get you into EJ and E now, Eric. <laughs> I don't have any EJ and E, so it, there you uh, go. There you go. It's, 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 it's on the table. But I gotta say, I like, I like the little stealth fighter ES ES44. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep, that one is cool. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. Pulling some uh, some rocket cars. Maybe, maybe somebody will make those. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <damn>. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's go ahead and move into the SD forty twos. Awesome. So um, the SD forty dash two is one of those locomotives that's sort of everywhere and all over the place. Um, for this round, I picked some locomotives that were diamonds in the rough in the in the SD forty dash two family. Some of the more unique paint schemes that that I could find. Uh, like the ES44s, these are available all in a powered or non-powered version. So if you, you just need one of these because you, you need one of these, um, you have a, a cheaper way out. Um, we've got the Burlington Northern in two flavors. The the Bicentennial is one of two of their Bicentennial units. And then the 8002 was the prototype for the tiger uh, the so-called Tiger Stripe uh, paint scheme. So I wanted to do that one. It was a unique, uh, unique paint scheme amongst the... I forget how many hundreds uh, SD forty dash twos BN had. Uh, these two sort of stood out, uh, and then we've got the uh, Maersk Sealand unit that Norfolk Southern uh, repainted. I was going to say that was right around nineteen ninety nine. Was shortly after the Conrail split. Uh, similar to some of the special programs that uh, the shipping company had done years before on the Santa Fe, and then three great great veterans units. One from the Louisville and Indiana. Uh, one from the Savage, uh, which was painted not far from here um, uh, on a short line down here in North Carolina, and one that we haven't run probably since the mid-1990s, shortly after the prototype was done, the Desert Victory Union for Union Pacific uh, with the camouflage and uh, the tribute to their employees who were fighting in uh, Operation Desert Storm. Uh, just a great looking locomotive that needed to be brought back into the lineup uh, and, and redone. Uh, you will notice in the catalog is a little bit more of a, uh, an upcharge on the Savage and the UP just because the, the deco on these units is so intense uh, that uh, it's, they're, they're some of the most challenging deco schemes that we've, we've given our factories yet. So um, I actually had to ask to make sure they could even do them before we could, before we got too far into the into the design process. So I didn't waste my artist's time. Uh, but they're beautiful locomotives, and uh, I think are going to be a standout for for anyone's layout. We did make some tooling changes on the SD forty dash two in the previous run to bring it more up to the standards of our SD forties and SD forty fives with the kinematic pilots um, and uh, the. Uh, the different mounts on the on the trucks and so forth. We will do uh, side frame appro- appropriate trucks. So the the ex Conrail unit there will have the earlier style trucks side frames, um, which are kind of unique unique to them. Uh, and there are some other road specific details on on these as well, of course, too. So uh, again, trying to take the the models up to the next next level and continue to improve all of our features and and, and operations. Yeah, I think the uh, I think all of the the paint schemes uh, on all of these are just a home run. 
Like, fantastic job. Like, obviously, Burlington Northern, Tiger Stripe. Nice to see the Tiger Stripe back. Um, don't see that all too often uh, in O-Scale, believe it or not. So I'm really glad to see uh, uh, an SD42 with the Tiger Stripe on it. And, of course, you know, the the Bicentennial paint scheme. And then, I, mean, I have to say, that Savage paint scheme, holy cow, that is that that is incredible looking. Like, for sure. Like, I, I you know, this is just obviously a render, you know, in a catalog. But uh, I imagine, like, you know, in, in act, when you actually see it come out of the production line and you open up the package, like, that thing has just got to be just amazing looking for sure. That one does look really sweet. I also really like to see the I'm, – I'm glad to see the Desert Camo back in a SD40. I've got an older MTH Desert Camo SD40. Um, I don't know if Lionel has ever done the Desert Camo in the SD40 or not, but it's really cool to – see that and that's definitely on the on the maybe list that and that savage one those two are really really nice looking yeah i like that uh the savage and the mercy those are really cool and that uh uh louisville and indiana it it, it kind of reminds me of a pennsylvania gg1 that style paint with the stripe on it um really cool i, I like all these they're awesome yeah, beautiful, beautiful paint schemes, beautiful models. Uh, I've got to say, I'm really happy to see the Maersk Sealin engine in the catalog. It's a paint scheme I have adored. Uh, I have been very, very envious of all the Lego model railroaders who've been taunting us with their Maersk engine. So I love how the Lionel uh, gave us one of those in the catalog. is really awesome. I, I really have to consider if I can, uh, can foot the bill to get one for myself. Yeah, that one's, that one's really nice, too. And I like the I like the kinematic pilots. You know, I've seen them rolled out to more and more diesels over the you know over the last few years, and I think that's a great compromise where where you know you're getting the best of both worlds, uh, adding a little more realism, but still able to negotiate tight turns. And it's nice to see nice to see the kinematic pilot here. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move into the uh, the SD ninety Max. All right, yeah, more uh, more great uh, military uh, and, and veteran schemes here. Uh, so we've got all five of the different CP schemes, um, which were, were really fun to do. Um, and then uh, we've got the, the two different uh, heritage versions that they've done as well. The EMD demo scheme, which is really colorful and, and a great paint scheme there. Uh, and then the SLRGs and the Norfolk Southerns, um, as they got them from UP, they, they ran around in that, that patched UP paint for a, a long time before uh, any of them got uh, repainted. I think uh, they were rebuilt as they were repainted. So uh, wanted to add that one into the mar- market there too. We uh, we do pretty well with some of the the patch jobs, whether it's uh, the 1970s when everyone was changing hands or, or some of the more modern ones. Uh, it's just a neat little variety to, to add into the, the offerings that we have. Uh, so great locomotive, you know, as a, as a Conrail fan, I'm, I'm, partial to the 80 Mac, but uh, uh, these engines are just big brutes and uh, impressive to say the least. I think these look great. I'm going to have a hard time deciding which, which of these Canadian pit Pacific ones to pick up because they all look fantastic. And uh, it's always nice to see the patch jobs. Those, those are fun to get. And uh, uh, that, that's kind of, a, I might have to get one of those too. <laughs> they all look great. If you're a if you're a Canadian Pacific diesel fan, well, uh, here's the page for you or pages for you, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, these these are great looking. I like the uh, I'm with Eric. I like the patch job, and I really like the demonstrator. Those are really cool looking. As an ex, uh, as a uh, a uh, World War II buff, I definitely love seeing the sixty six forty four. Uh, heritage unit which or veterans unit from cp that's the one with the spitfire paint job for d-day that's really cool and the fact that canadian pacific did that paint scheme in the first place is absolutely amazing and the fact that you guys brought over to o scale uh, once again is an opportunity for those who missed the the runs from mth they can grab a line l1 and not feel left out and have a wonderful sounding engine to go with it as well all right let's go ahead and move into the uh, well i think these are going to be Definitely uh, going to make a lot of people happy, but uh, looks like uh, we have a return of the uh, the F40 Amtrak's and others. 
Absolutely. Uh, this was this was one of the uh, the first all new diesel projects um, that I got to work on. Uh, so so glad to bring this one one back in. Uh, and the next several pages here, we'll be looking at F forties and different variations. But uh, as a, as a newly uh, as a more newly designed tool uh, for us, we built a lot of modularity into this so that we could replicate some of the different uh, construction phase differences of the F forties. And uh, so while we did phase three uh, locomotives, for example, in the first one run, we did make some changes. So we did a different number series, different fuel tank arrangement, for example, on this one than the ones we did in round one. So uh, you will see some differences in details. Uh, we did the phase three and the phase four um, as, as accurate renditions of prototype locomotives. None of the straight, uh, the, the regular powered F40s, I should say, got uh, painted into phase five or the veterans. But you'll see that their their paired cabbage engines uh, coming up later on, uh, and we know how people kind of like to have a matched consist. So, uh, with Amtrak's blessing, we went ahead and did uh, powered versions of, of regular F40s in these paint schemes as well, uh, and and both turned out very nice. Um, as, as some of you may have seen in, in past things we've done with with Matt Donnelly from Amtrak, he's just such a wonderful asset to the model train community uh, for all of us manufacturers. Uh, working with us on making things as accurate as we possibly can for Amtrak and was with us every step of the way on these to get all of the details right, paint schemes right, colors right, and so forth. It, it's been been great working with him, and it's been great seeing the uh, the appreciation for Amtrak growing uh, greatly over the last uh, couple of years, especially uh, around the country. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see that and happy to see Amtrak doing doing well. Uh, lots of road uh, road specific, but really should say road number specific details on these. These also have the kinematic pilots. These will do an 054 minimum curve. Um, you've got uh, some semi different lighting package on 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 some of these, depending on which variations you have. But that was one of the, the challenges we had with the F40 was we had to introduce some new light codes into the the legacy code base. Because we had strobe lights, ditch lights, uh, the marker lights, headlights, and cab lights, uh, and then we added in the, the cab control cars and everything else, and it was a it was a whole world of hurt. So the engineering team was actually happy to see that all of their work from a few years ago got to be recycled again uh, with another run of these locomotives. Yeah, these were I remember these when they came out a couple of years ago. They were just incredibly well received. And uh, I believe they sold out pretty quickly as well. So uh, it's glad to I'm glad to see you guys bringing these back. Uh, new paint schemes. Um, I, I I love that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I love that ski train. That Rio Grande ski train is pretty cool. I'm sure there's somebody <laughs> else here on this uh, <laughs> podcast that will like that too. I don't want to steal your thunder about that. Uh, but but the, yeah, these are great. So. Kind of going off of what Matt R. said there, uh, the ski train. Uh, this is one that I am very happy, to say the least, to see. And I'm also a little bit, I'm a little bit salty about it because I was actually, I just got my ski train four pack in. And I was writing my <laughs> script for the review. And I, I, I was really hoping to see the F40 sooner, but I didn't see him. It's like, oh, okay, Lionel's not going to make them. I bought the UP 1989 Rio Grande Heritage Unit and put in my script and recorded it. Oh, as of now, Lionel hasn't made these. And now I have to redo that entire segment to say <laughs> why I was making these. But, uh, but I'm very thankful um, that you guys went out of your way to include these ski train F40s. They're so iconic. I'm very excited, and I will be probably buying two of them for the whole consist, which I intend to buy as time goes on. Uh, another one that I want to point attention to is one that uh, I know a lot of people are excited for, and... That is the CSX business train. That is such a beautiful paint scheme. I'm so happy CSX did it in real life. And the fact that you brought it over to O scale, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't wait. Um, I wish I had more funds to, to grab it, but that, that is a beautiful paint scheme. And plus a two pack with two observations. I don't think we've ever seen that before. So that's awesome. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Those I'm not cool. usually the biggest CSX fan, but I, uh, I, I'm, that's the one I'm eyeing is that CSX train. Plus one. Uh, I had a question on the uh, passenger cars for the uh, CSX set. On the end car, is that a theater car? It is. It's a theater car. Um, it's like the theater cars we've done previously. 
Um, and the tooling for this one's actually pretty darn close because CSX acquired this car from Conrail, and, and that's what we used as the basis for our tooling. We're not going to put the camera in this one. Um, it's okay. one of those things that over the last year, the electronics cost on that really skyrocketed from our, our vendor, like 500% uh, increase. So oh, yeah. uh, we, left the, we left the Wi-Fi camera app out of this, uh, but okay. you still have all the other, other details. Um, and this was a great one because this one was sort of coming together as the catalog was coming together. They were repainting these cars. And uh, we had two F40s in the catalog for the longest time. And then uh, I think it was – it was only a few, maybe a month or so before we were really wrapping it up. And I said, oh, they just painted number three. Throw it in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so we, we added another skew at the last minute. Uh, the return of the, the B&O colors on this has really made it a beautiful train. And I, I, I couldn't wait to bring it back out again. So I was glad we could jump on this one. Uh, and also the CSX, or sorry, the, the Rio Grande Ski Train. Uh, just another beautiful, beautiful consist. And um a really neat, uh, neat piece of railroading. So, uh, both of these I'm hoping are, are just as popular as the, the Amtrak versions. Uh, and of course we've got the powered units we talked about at the beginning and we've got the return of the, uh, the cabbage, uh, locomotives, which have some, some great electronics in there and, and pair nicely with the F40 so that you can go, uh, back and forth and whichever end is leading, you've got the, the lights there, you've got the sound from there, uh, and, and so forth. Really, uh, really neat engines and uh, uh, cab cars and uh, one I was, was glad to be able to bring back in. Uh, I think the veterans unit was unveiled just a few months after we put the catalog out the last time these came. So uh, it was good to be able to finally bring that, uh, that around as, as well as a couple of other prototypical paint schemes on the, the cab cars. So uh, thanks again to Amtrak for making that all possible. Uh, and I hope everyone's uh, happy to see these back in the lineup. Oh, I'm sure they are. Uh, for sure. Yeah, these are these are great. All right, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the F7s. So F7s are one of those locomotives that I never run out of new liveries to, to put on and never seem to get old in the catalog. Uh, and tried to pick some, some new and different ones, uh, as well as a few classics for this go-round. Like we've done in the past, uh, these will be available in an AA set, as well as two separate sale B units. The AA sets include two power units. Uh, the lead unit includes sound. The second unit uh, is non-sound equipped, but both have uh, the full lighting and full smoke features, uh, and the same electrocouplers and so forth, same level of detail. So uh, you've got two engines uh, with, with power there for the front. If you want more power and more sounds, there's an add-on powered B unit and also an add-on super bass B unit, uh, which kicks all the sounds up a notch, uh, and they, they work together in unison. So you can put together an, an AA, an ABA, or an ABBA set uh, real easily and have a, a great set of power. And uh, we've noticed that with, with a super bass and a regular sound unit uh, going in the engineering room, it, it gets plenty loud down there. So these things will, will certainly shake your, shake your basement. Uh, and with all the powered units in there, you've got no problem pulling any kind of train you want. Uh, so we've got uh, the Santa Fe yellow bonnet. Uh, I don't know if Lionel's done those in the past or not, uh, but wanted to do something a little bit different there. Uh, Lehigh Valley in one of their uh, later paint schemes. Uh, Sioux Line in the, the white and red. Uh, Union Pacific, which is one of those classic paint schemes, but I keep getting requests for it because, oddly enough, it's one that we haven't done on F units, it seems, in, in quite some time. So um, brought those back. And then a fantasy scheme that uh, just it, it, it needs to be um, because, again, we get so many requests and it's just hard to believe it didn't actually exist. But uh, the Southern Pacific Daylight uh, paint scheme on these F units was a, a natural as well. The, the cotton belt had one or two, I think they were FP7s or FP9s, uh, painted up in the, the daylight colors, but the SP never never did. They were all delivered in the Black Widow scheme, which is attractive in its own right. But uh, for those who, who like the look of SP EMD power, uh, but maybe want something shorter on your layout uh, to pair with smaller passenger cars uh, instead of an E8, E9, I think this is a great option. Yeah, those yellow bonnets are incredible. Uh, I love the the blue striped one you did on the front. So yeah, Lino didn't do a yellow um, F seven before. Uh, uh, MTH did one uh, back in uh, I think it was like a dealer appreciation or something. I think it was two thousand eight or something or two thousand seven. But 
Uh, I'm very, very ecstatic to see these in there. And um, there were a couple of different front ends that they did with the blue and the yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, And this one definitely is prototypical. uh, And uh, I'm just very, very excited to see it. I do have a question on that B unit. The B unit has silver trucks. Is is that is that supposed to be black trucks, or is that something with the render? Uh, that's probably with the with the rendering. Let me double check that. It should match the uh, okay. match the two A units. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the Santa Fe's yellow bonnets. You know, we talk about it as if it's one paint scheme, but there were almost as many variations to the yellow bonnet paint scheme as there were yellow bonnet engines. I think. Yes. Uh, so we we did struggle a little bit to find two that were relatively close, and there are some there will be some some deco differences between the two units, um, but we we found two that were pretty close to each other, so that they didn't look way off, uh, and, and still gave you the look of a nice matched pair, uh, as with the the B units as well, because there were lots of variations in that. So uh, I can't recall if it's if it's truly silver trucks or black trucks on that, but uh, definitely adding it to my my notes of things here to. To double check with on uh, as we get through uh, the catalog week. Great, great, yeah. Oh, so so we're saying that the uh, the two A units the um, are both going to have uh, kind of a unique front to them. Yes, uh, the the second unit which has its back to us in the catalog. Um, I believe on that one, the blue stripe is still a solid blue stripe coming down through the for lack of terms the cigar band there on the on the nose, uh, but. Uh, on that one, I think it's not quite solid all the way through. There's there's a break in the stripe uh, yes. in the middle of the band uh, or uh, beneath the band. So we captured that on the the locomotive so that they're they're different. Uh, the ACI tag falls in different locations as well uh, on them to match match the prototype. And these will have, as we did on the last round of uh, more traditional uh, war bonnets, these will have the combination of silver paint and that uh, our what we call our special silver, which is more of a metallic looking uh, stainless steel uh, type of finish uh, that is so, you know, uniquely Santa Fe and, and really uh, screams to be done on these models to make them look right. Okay. That's, that's incredible. I love the fact that um, you use two different uh, prototypical, uh, you know, yellow and blue f- uh, front ends for these. So these are 100% uh, uh I'm in for these, like no doubt about it. So yeah, me I'm too. Very, very excited for these. Yeah, I'm re- those Santa Fe's are awesome. I'm, I'm definitely yep. in on those. I also like the Sue's though. This look really nice. So some good, some going to be some tough choices here <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, Lehigh Valley for me. I like, I like those. Those are cool. I, I have to say, I, I it the second second two page spread with the Sioux line, the daylight and the UP. Those are all sharp. Um, I'm not usually a Sioux line guy, but all the Sioux line engines, this catalog were making me second guess that. Um, I love the daylight paint scheme. As I've mentioned on previous episodes of the podcast, no one is a bigger daylight foamer than myself as an owner of eight daylight engines. I love the paint scheme. So to see it running, going in F sevens is awesome. I actually recently acquired the legacy PAs and on a layout, my layout's not small by any stretch of the imagination, but oh my goodness, they take up a lot of space. So I like that you provide an option for a little bit of a shorter daylight paint scheme for those who are a little bit space constrained and want to have something a little bit different, but that's awesome, and the UP one is just sharp. I, I'm, I'm so glad to see that coming back. And I had a question, too. Um, on the uh, powered B units, um, those going to have sound, or is it just motion? Uh, just motion on the powered B units and no motor in the super bass B units. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, these are these are home definitely home run for me. All right, let's move on to the, uh, to the uh, page 62. Uh, the first set of F9s, and I'm going to have to say, this is like one of the most striking paint schemes I have ever That's seen so in cool. any catalog, <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I love so. it. I am getting this thing 100%. I love it. <laughs> and my girlfriend's going to like it, too. <laughs> the, the the AC and W they're, they're right down the road from us here. Uh, they actually uh, come into Charlotte, and um, they acquired two of the Norfolk Southern um, – uh, units and then Redding and Northern acquired too. So we wanted to to do them both here. We've done Redding and Northern cars previously, so I didn't redo the passenger cars, but uh, we had some tooling that was close enough to some of what the AC and W has for uh, their business train and uh, and added them in here as well. 
This is absolutely, without a doubt, one of the most unique paint schemes uh, I've seen come on a locomotive in a long time. And the colors are absolutely brilliant. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's one that you would swear is uh, someone's hallucination or something we just came <laughs> up with uh, here in, in-house. But uh, <laughs> go online and, and, and look at some of the photos and you, you'll see just what a striking uh, color it really is in real life. Beautiful locomotives. Uh, they've done a wonderful job with the the, the train, uh, and it looks looks fantastic. So, uh, really excited to bring this in, and and glad to see people are uh, are gravitating towards it, uh, because I, I can see it being one of those engines and one of those paint schemes that could be a little polarizing, but um, it's definitely a, a cool looking locomotive. Yeah, I, I, the first thing I did when I saw it, I said. That can't be real. And then I Googled it and I was like, holy cow, it is real. I, I did the totally, same thing. <laughs> I'm totally getting that. Yeah, I'm totally cool. getting that. <laughs> and you know what? Even if it wasn't real, I would actually even consider it. I'm like, all right, that's fine. It's not real. Who cares? This is just incredibly looking. Like I love it. I love the way it looks. That's something. I was curious on the cars, though. I, and we were kind of debating this back and forth a little bit earlier. What color is that? Is that pink or purple? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it's, it's somewhere in between. It's a it's a very pinkish purple or sort of a purplish pink. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not a color you typically associate with uh, with a railroad uh, of any sorts. But um, it's 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 interesting uh, and it, it fits. Uh, it, it works in its own, in its own way. So uh, it's definitely not like any other train you will have on your layout. Uh, no one will mistake this for another black steam engine on your wall. That's uh, one thing. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, this is definitely going to get attention. So that, that, well, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And with the uh, two pack, is that going to is that a generator car in the front? Is that going to have the sounds or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that'll great. be the, the generator up front, um, and then you've got the um, uh, the XUP Dome Lounge uh, behind it there. Uh, and then two heavyweight cars. Their their train is actually a, a whole big uh, mismatch of, uh, of of equipment, but it's all been beautifully restored. So yeah, as the as the generator cars do, we'll we'll have the uh, the sounds in there as well. Cool, sweet, cool. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead and move into some pretty cool uh, scale train sets. Right, page uh, sixty four. All right, so our train sets, our scale sets are uh, a lot of fun to do. I, I really enjoy doing these, and uh, so much of the catalog then sort of evolves out of uh, what I can pair up to make make neat sets. And I, I think the theme for this catalog is go big or go home uh, <laughs> when it comes to our train sets. Uh, the first one we've got here is the, the Bessemer and Lake Erie uh, ore set. And... Uh, I love industrial railroading, uh, and the BNLE is as industrial uh, a mainline railroad as it comes. So, uh, the main set is a, uh, a powered A and a, a super base B, and then you get uh, twelve ore cars and a bay window caboose. Uh, and if that's not enough for you, you can add another A B set, uh, and then we have two six packs of ore cars. So you can get up to twenty four separately numbered uh, ore jennies uh, behind this thing. Uh, and if you picked up any of our BNLE six packs of ore cars over the last couple of years, those were all different numbers as well. So, uh, for guys who have big layouts or access to clubs with big layouts, uh, this is a, a home run. And the other nice thing, though, is with ore jennies, they're so small that um, you know a twelve car train is really only about as long as like a, a five or six car train. So you can you get the look of a long, long, long train without having to uh, take up quite as much real estate, uh, which I think is why they're, they're pretty popular with modelers in any scale. Uh, the color scheme on these engines is just great. Uh, like I said, I think it's just a, a wonderful uh, bit of industrial railroading to, to add to a layout. Yeah, I, I love the sets that you guys have been doing uh, in the last several catalogs. And They've always they've been home runs, even for you know for railroads that I don't usually model. But um, uh, you know I have the uh, the BNSF uh, tank train, and um, you know I have the hustle muscle on order. So um, I I'm always a huge fan of sets because I think they just you get so much value in them. And this one is uh, no different. I mean, there's just uh, you get a 
an A unit, you get a super base B. And then, I mean, look at all these ore cars you get. Like, that's just incredible looking. I, I, I love it. Yeah, that's great. Nice, big, long train set. And like you said, it's always, you know, I always try to get a set if I can. If, if there's a locomotive that I want and it comes with a set, I always try to get the set because you're just going to get a better deal and a whole bunch of nice cars as well. Yeah, the um, this in particular is really cool. I love all the I love ore cars. I mean, this is probably the set to buy if you're going to buy it. And if you get the whole thing, you know, the set plus all the add-ons, it's a long train. It'd be really cool. But it's like the Doobie Brothers long train running or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome set. Um, lots of value. I, there isn't really much I can say at this point that hasn't been already be said. But I, I I just love the paint scheme on these F units. They're they're awesome. I. You can't get more uh, bold and eye-catching than than this. Well, I guess the previous page can challenge that, I suppose. But you know, this is a this is a pretty close, <laughs> pretty close runner-up. All right, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and move into uh, uh, a rocket set. Yeah, oh, yeah. If, if the ore train wasn't big enough for you, uh, <laughs> this one really tips the scales. Um, this uh, replicates the the rocket booster trains uh, that that travel from Utah uh, down to Florida. And really neat operation. Uh, when I went out to see the Golden Spike site um, about two years ago now, uh, you drive right past the, the plant where these are made. You drive right pla- past the uh, the loading uh, point for these. It's actually one of the sort of the last industry on the uh, uh, the Transcontinental Railroad before it, it, it ends um, uh, from its you know north of the uh, the cutoff. And so I got to see these cars in person, and just a really neat story behind the the train unique equipment uh you can you could run it with multiple locomotives because it it's not up all the way although sometimes the, the up engines run all the way through uh so a real fun one uh when we had the chance to get this tooling from mth it was high on on our list uh because you can just do so much with these cars so uh what we tried to do here is is hit this for all uh all budgets and all all angles because it's it's a lot of a train to swallow uh, so we did offer the whole thing as a set. You get a legacy ES44. You get the uh, six idler cars um, and then five of the uh, rocket booster cars and then the, the rider uh, Pullman car at the end. Uh, we've also made the items available separate sale. So for the rocket booster cars, the, the one in the set and this, the five pack that's sold separately uh, have different numbers. So sometimes these trains do run as a, a two booster train, uh, and so you would see a, a ten car train if you've got the real estate to run uh, and double this train length. You can do it, um, but we've we've made them two different numbers that way. But then we've also made the separate sale five pack both with the load and without the load. So what's really cool about this train is if you take the the top cover off, each section of the train has its own uh, unique portion of the load. And if you take all the mounting hardware off and take all the rocket components together, you can assemble them into this 30-inch tall scale uh, rocket booster uh, to have there. Um, and sort of like we, we talked about earlier with uh, loading in your stock cars with, with figures, uh, it's, it's such a cool train, but I think a lot of people probably never take the covers off. So if you wanted to increase the length of your train or just have the look of the train without the, the, the rocket, we've, we've also made it available as just empty cars uh, without the in- internal components uh, to help give you a, a lower cost alternative on this. And then we've also made the idler car six pack available separately. So if maybe you picked up uh, some of these cars before in a previous run from MTH uh, and you want accurate idler cars to go between because our, uh, our standard O box car tooling is actually matches the prototype for these cars uh, we have accurate cars in uh, different road numbers in the separate sale and then are in the set as well. And we're tooling up, of course, the new door arrangement and the, the clearance bars for that lead car uh, for the first time. So I think for, for even for people who may already have uh, an older set, there's something there you're going to be uh, very happy to see come onto the market and, and want to pick up. Uh, but what a fun train with uh, so much going on uh, on board it. Picking this one up is, is certainly going to be uh, a, a big piece of any collection. Yeah, I I got to say, I mean, this is really cool because, you know, when MTH did this, I don't think they did the idler cars. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've got the original MTH rocket train set, and I don't think it 
mine at least didn't have the idler cars. I don't believe uh, they did. No, and so, no, it didn't. So that is so cool that you're doing that. I, again, it's 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 Lionel taking the XMTH stuff and not just saying, okay, here, we're just rehashing it and here it is. You're putting your own stamp on it and making it your own and making it, you know, I think better than the original, which is super, super cool. And so, and, and like you said, for people like me, I've already got the original rocket set, so I don't necessarily need the booster cars so I can get the, uh, get the idler six pack and then be good to go. So I, I, I really like this. Yeah, I, this is really top notch. I like the fact that you can t- take the pieces out and make a uh, scale rocket booster out of it. That's awesome. Question though on the uh, on the separate five pack with the rockets, mm-hmm. do those come with covers? Yes, yes, they do. Okay, uh, they all come. They all come with the covers. Uh, we just pictured it one with and one without the the cover, so people could sort of have a better idea of uh, you know what's in, what's inside each of these. And each one's a little bit different. Each one's its own own section of the rocket awesome thank you that's cool i i really like this set um i think it's really cool now the uh the boxcar six pack the idler car does only the first one come with the clearance bars or do all of them do in the uh just the separate sales set only the first one comes with the clearance bars uh, and that's like the prototype they, they put okay. them on the first car in the train and then the rest are just standard boxcars cool Sweet, sweet. Yep. I, again, just everyone's kind of said what's need to be said, but uh, awesome set. Uh, definitely, uh, we haven't definitely a first in in terms of the sheer level of dedication to actually representing this set, and just the amount of cool stuff you get, and the value, and just just overall fun. Uh, definitely, definitely worth getting for your own collection if this interests you. Let's go ahead and move on to page sixty eight. Uh, we have a couple of sets in here. Yeah, two uh, two smaller sets. Uh, we had such great feedback uh, from our New Hope and Ivyland set um, last year uh, that we did another uh, Eastern uh, short line, classic short line here with the Black River and Western uh, with the SW1 and uh, three of our 18-inch cars. Uh, the art is correct there. Two of them have the four-wheel trucks. One of them has the six-wheel trucks uh, to better match the, the prototypes on the railroad. Uh, another you know, classic New Jersey short line that uh, we wanted to add into the line. And then it being uh, Norfolk Southern's 40th anniversary this year, we also did a special uh, set for that railroad. Um, so many great actual heritage locomotives, but uh, we designed, uh, took a sort of unique spin and did one of our own here. Uh, one of our creative artists, uh, Sarah, is a, a huge Norfolk Southern and Southern Railroad fan. So uh, toss this one to her. And uh, you see a mix of... Uh, inspired but freelance uh things as well as some more more accurate uh cars in here uh the triple crown containers on the uh the southwind well car the steel car with the simulated metal coil hood the 60 foot box car has the illuminated flag uh stars on it uh and then the the heritage caboose with the southern logo is actually based off a, a norfolk southern prototype uh so it's, it's a neat blend um also took a little bit of inspiration from some of the Lionel heritage units that we did before Norfolk Southern did their uh, actual heritage units. Uh, we did a few of those, and I think this blends in nicely with, with that as well. So uh, for those who uh, have a love of, of NS, this is a, a neat neat set to, to add in there. And uh, hopefully it gives something for everybody, whether you like short lines or big monster trains. <laughs> we've got a set for you here in the catalog. Yeah, I'm not a uh, I'm not a Norfolk Southern guy, but uh, that 40th anniversary set is very very sweet, and uh, yeah, kudos to uh, whoever designed that because um, I just the colors I love the the variation in the cars like having a well car with husky stacks and a coil car and uh, just it, it's really really neat looking. I like the uh, this is. I know there's some more of these, I think, in a couple pages, but the the illuminated flag boxcar, uh, I've got one that was put out a couple years ago, and I really like the way they did that car because it's not the, – the stars on the flag are illuminated, but they're not illuminated in a way where it just screams, hey, I, I'm, I've got lights on my stars. It's very subtle, and you really don't notice it too much until you dim the lights and then you went, wow, Hey, there's, there's lights on the, on that flag. That's cool. And I, 
I've always liked the way that was done. It, it wasn't, it wasn't like super stand out standing out a ton just very subtle and and well and uh sort of sort of classy the way they did all those those lighted stars it's nice to see it on this set you know, a lot of people unless you, unless you knew that the stars were illuminated you might not even notice it until the lights are dimmed and that's what i kind of like about it. it's kind of kind of a hidden feature that, that that doesn't really come out until until the lights go down yeah no i totally agree with you there um I, I love the NS set. Like this, that that paint scheme on that engine is striking. I'm no NS fan by any stretch of the imagination, but wow, that that's one I'd I'd love to add to my collection. It's just the perfect combination of classic Southern with the NS touch to it. It's it's beautiful. Uh, I really like it too. Um, the NS set, uh, you know, plus one for that. I love the the Southern, you know, inspiration with the paint. I love the. Uh, the logo with kind of like the track on it. That's really cool. Um, I like that a whole lot. The uh, cars, the, you know, the Husky stack, coil car, um, flag car, caboose, really beautiful set. And I think all in all, really great mix of uh, sets here. I really like them a lot. All right. So let's go ahead and move over to the uh, wood coaches. All right. Well, uh, as you know, we, this is the second catalog you're seeing uh, some of these in. These are obviously, again, some, some things we picked up from MTH uh, and just absolutely beautiful, beautiful passenger car models. Uh, we're adding in the baggage car and the observations that we hadn't done previously on the, the Strasburg runs that we did from the, the earlier catalog. Um, and a couple of, of uh, different paint schemes here. We've got a maintenance of way set. Uh, these are all the cars will be available. All the road names are available in three, two packs each. So you get a baggage car coach, combine coach, um, and then observation coach. Uh, the maintenance of way, we want to do something that was a little bit more generic. You know, a lot of these cars survived uh, in company service um, into much later years. And it's, it's why we still have some preserved today uh, was thanks to their maintenance of way duties. So these are great behind your, your wreck Derek or your work train. Uh, and we kept it uh, a simple generic maintenance of way so you can, blend them in with just about any road name. Uh, and then we've got the, the New York Central and Hudson River. Uh, really beautiful uh, paint scheme on, on this one. Uh, again, I think you have to be able to zoom in and, and appreciate some of the finer uh, pinstriping and detail on these cars uh, to get it. Uh, we've got a, a brilliant green Southern and a, a really vibrant blue uh, set of, of Wabash uh, cars as well. Uh, those may be some of my favorites. And then one more piece that's, I think, sort of like the horse cars, one of those you know, smaller chapters in railroad history that a lot of people aren't aware of, uh, were the traveling chapel cars. And we've done a, a single car for the uh, Evangel, uh, that is a, a neat chapel car. It's based on a prototype car that, that traveled the country uh, and was a, a mobile church. And you could attend services on the train en route, or they would park at a town for a uh, an extended stay and do missionary work there. And as the, the nation was expanding, this was an important part of uh, expanding with the country. Uh, a lot of towns didn't have churches right away. And so uh, this was your, your first stop between hell on wheels and, uh, and your redemption were these, these uh, chapel cars. So uh, a neat little piece of railroad history, uh, one that could be blended in with, with any railroad, uh, and something I think a lot of people will be enjoy reading about and, and picking up for their layout. Yeah, these are these are absolutely stunning looking. I love these these uh, wood wood sided coaches. Um, I, I'm really glad that you decided to do the uh, the maintenance of way uh, because you know if you don't if you're, obviously from the previous catalog or in this catalog if you're not kind of seeing you know one of your railroads or or anything like that like you could definitely pick up that maintenance of way and kind of put it behind anything. So. Um, and I actually uh, would consider uh, picking up maybe one of those two packs of the maintenance of way. Yeah, I really, uh, I like these cars. I've always loved them when MTH did them. And I'm, I've always been kicking myself for not owning a set. And I, one of the sets I've always loved, and this is a kind of a little plug for you, Eric, too, is the uh, uh, early 1800s or late maybe you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, Empire State Express with the uh, 999. Yeah. Um, I've always loved that set, and I've wanted it actually ever since your video. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to have to probably look at that uh, New York and Hudson River um, set. Uh, I like that chapel car. 
That's cool. I might have to pick yeah. that up, add it to my uh, what I've currently got. <laughs> I I love the observation cars. Those are probably some of the most ornate and most detailed observation back platforms I've ever seen. I was blown away when I saw these. So maybe maybe I'll have to snag one for myself because those are those are beautiful. Yeah, I think uh, a couple things to point out too uh, before we move on is uh, number one, uh, these have figures installed. Which is a super bonus. Love that. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Um, and number two, uh, if you take a look at the minimum curve, I mean, O forty two, maybe O thirty six. You know, I, I don't know, but usually O forty two and O thirty six kind of you can usually go hand in hand. Good on smaller curves. Uh, figures installed. Uh, yeah, these these are definitely um, definitely home runs for me. They would definitely look great behind some of the Atlantics we saw earlier. Let's move into the uh, the two bay hoppers. Okay, yeah, uh, I mean two bay hoppers are, are two bay hoppers, right? Uh, there's actually two different uh, variations here in, in prototype uh, that were very similar: the Pennsylvania's GLA and the sort of called the 1917 common design uh, that had some differences in end details, mostly. Uh, a variety of, of road names, some uh, pretty well known. We did a couple of N and Ws, of course. Um, I think there was some. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since we, we started this podcast, but I think there was some N and W scheme somewhere in this catalog um, <laughs> that uh, you might want some hopper cars to go with. Uh, we've got a, a variety of um, coal companies and power companies there as well, uh, and some of those earlier color schemes that that you don't see as often, but they're they're very interesting uh, and with the lettering and, and detailing on them. So I enjoy bringing some of those into the into the catalog, and then another you know. We keep talking about the sort of the unique cars and, and stories. As we were doing research, I found uh, a couple of cars in the Bureau of Mines uh, for the Department of Interior. And uh, they owned a, a small fleet of these cars that would be sent out into the field to do mine inspections, to do uh, work with the employees. If there was a mine collapse or you needed uh, mine rescue uh, help, they would be sent for first aid. Uh, so a variety of uses for these cars. And, you know, it's almost an unwritten law of model railroading that you have to have a coal mine on your layout. So <laughs> if you have a coal mine on your layout, it's got to get inspected eventually. And here's the perfect excuse to tack a, a passenger car onto your um, coal drag and, and head it up the mountain. Uh, I just thought they were neat cars with a neat story and uh, wanted to include those in here as well. That is cool. I like that a lot. All right, let's move into the coil cars. All right. This is a, another great modern freight car. Um, modern diesels like our ES44s, our SD70s, uh, they are some of our most popular locomotives. So anytime we can add some more modern rolling stock into the roster, uh, we're, we're happy to do it. And with the coil cars, uh, we did a variety of road names. There's a few um, sort of fantasy schemes or uh, flashback schemes in here. Most of them are, are based on, on prototype cars. And we've done some clean cars, and we've also done uh, a whole spread of graffiti cars. And I think these will be the the the, uh, the hands down winners out of the bunch. When we started doing graffiti cars, uh, probably about three or four years ago now, we were very trepid about it um, because some people love it uh, because it's what you see. Uh, whether you actually agree with the graffiti as vandalism or you know or whatnot, it's what you see. So people want to recreate it. Uh, and other people just absolutely hate the concept of uh, the vandalism of it. Uh, so we always try and have both clean and, and graffitied cars when we when we do these. But uh, from a sales perspective, there's no denying that uh, there's a strong demand for uh, for these artistic cars. And uh, our creative team, frankly, just enjoys doing them too. So we we keep giving them things uh, things to work on. Uh, and I think these are going to be the some of the, the standouts uh, in here. Each of course, each side is different. Uh, and each car is unique. Are these uh, are these XMTH? Yes, these okay. are XMTH. Okay, so on the on the XMTH rolling stock, are you going to keep the MTH style trucks? Or are you are you developing a? Are you going to outfit them with Lionel trucks? Uh, it will it will actually vary from car to car, uh, depending on um, where the 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 tooling is and and which style of car. Some of them we will have to use the uh, old MTH style. Others will be transitioning over to a Lionel truck. Okay. Um, it, it, uh, when we acquired tooling, there was some tooling uh, that was retained uh, because obviously MTH got split. 
So Atlas has some things, we have some things, and there are tools that are common to things that a, a variety of manufacturers now have. So those are held in common, and we have um, licensing rights to, to use those tools if need be. Uh, in some cases for us, it will be more expeditious to simply mod- make modifications to the tools and use our existing trucks uh, okay. or, or other components, as the case may be. Yeah, yeah. I like the graffiti I, versions. I, those are cool. Me too. Yeah, I, I, for one, like the graffiti ones as well. So, I mean, and you're only, you know, spending an extra $10, you know, to get uh, additional graffiti on there. So, to me, that's that's definitely worth the price. Yeah, that um, the Conrail will go good with the with some of the uh, Penn Central stuff that I have, and that's also in the catalog, too. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really awesome to see graffiti coming to uh, O-Scale because that's something uh, HO and N-Scale has been very, very spoiled with, and we haven't got to get a chance to have much of that in O-Scale to see a lot of it in the most recent catalog here for Lionel. It really starts to open the door for the potential what we can see for the modern uh, enthusiast here. Yep, and speaking of modern enthusiasts, uh, we have some uh, one of my favorite uh, types of rolling stock. We have some Husky stacks. Yes, we've brought these back again uh, as well. Uh, the the well cars here are die cast, so you've got plenty of good low center of gravity weight uh, on these. These things track beautifully. Uh, a variety of road names again uh, available with and without graffiti on the well car. Uh, the graffiti versions turned out really cool. I think here also. Uh, but we kept the containers clean because you don't usually see those tags too much. Uh, the the Burlington Northern car, we did one of their special uh, anniversary containers in that as well. So you've got a, a special container on on that set. Yeah, these these are great. Definitely uh, going in my uh, in my pre order <laughs> for sure. Especially the Burlington Northern uh, graffiti ones. Like that's that's really cool. I like I love those. Plus one. These are these are really cool. Um, I don't see them in here, and I, off the top of my head, I don't remember if they were done. Uh, is there a plan to do an end of train device car with one of these? Uh, we've done those in the in the past. Uh, I didn't do a round of them on this run, uh, but we'll definitely hit those with an, an EOT again as well. Uh, the last run of uh, well cars we did, we did them. We did some with and some without the uh, end of train device. All right, uh, let's move into the uh, illuminated uh, flag box cars. Absolutely. Uh, talked a little bit about this with the Norfolk Southern set. Uh, we've got some great separate sale options here that match uh, some locomotives from this catalog, some locomotives from uh, some of our recent catalogs, and some locomotives that you haven't seen yet, but, you know, maybe there's a uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge uh, hint on some of those if you haven't seen the, the schemes yet. Uh, but we've been, <laughs> we've been blessed with so many great patriotic locomotives over the last couple of years that uh, one, one of some paint schemes to match for those who want a, a consist to, to stretch behind them. Uh, these are all, of course, fanciful things, but uh, just fun to do. Uh, we got some indoor boxcars as well. Indoor boxcars as well, yep. Uh, these are uh, more of a classic freight car. Uh, you had the two doors on the side for loading, and then one end of the car, the whole end of the car opens up, and uh, our models do just like the prototype. So if you had an exceedingly long load, um, you could open the end of the car and uh, load in that way. They were also used for, for vehicle loading and unloading uh, pipes, uh, anything anything big that needed to be brought in and, and under the under the weather. Uh, so uh, fun cars, all based on uh, prototype paint schemes. Uh, we don't show it here in the catalog for space, but of course the Santa Fe car will have the the Scout on one side, and that uh, that car will have the Santa Fe map on the other side of the car. Gotcha. Uh, all the other cars are are based on uh, on the actual prototypes also. I like these. These are really cool. Yeah, those I'll are definitely cool. getting a couple of these. For sure, for sure. All right, let's move into the uh, page 86. We have some bobber cabooses. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, the former yep, yeah, uh, former MTH bobber caboose. Um, a really small car, but really loaded with detail uh, and, and and heavy also. Uh, these things should, should track beautifully. Uh, they, they do have a detailed interior with figure. They've got uh, lighting inside and on the, uh, the marker lights, uh, separate handrails. Uh, so this is definitely not the, uh, the little bobber caboose we put in the, the Thomas the Tank engine sets for sure. Uh, beautiful scale model, just a, a very small prototype and uh, a variety of, uh, of road names here uh, for the most part based on, uh, on prototype paint schemes. Uh, we wanted to do a, a throwback there also for, 
some of the older modelers for the U.S. Military Railroad uh, for uh, you know, 19th century uh, train fans. Yeah, I, uh, I've got a southern version of one of these from MTH, and I've always loved it, and I'm really happy to see it appear again. And like you said, they're, they're really solid. I mean, they're small, but they, they weigh quite a lot, and they, they run really well. Yeah, I have the uh, I have the Santa Fe version of this, and you are absolutely correct. Like, they look small, and when you look at them, like just you know, with the eye, you're like, oh, what is that? Just like a little thing, but you pick it up, it it's got some serious heft to it, and it's it's solid. Like, you know, this isn't any kind of like little kind of weak thing. I mean, it's it's solid, it's heavy, and uh, this thing is definitely uh, riding on your track really nicely. Hey, now I do have a question that I just thought of. You know, in a lot of these MTH, XMTH cars with lighting, I, I think the one I had had incandescent lighting, if I'm not mistaken. Are you guys going to keep that or going to replace it with LEDs? or Anything that we've acquired with incandescent bulbs will be replaced with LED. Okay, cool. That's nice. Is it going to be just straight, just a straight LED or are you going to have any constant voltage in there or anything? Uh, we'll, put a, uh, we'll put a capacitor on there to help uh, keep things flicker free. Cool. Awesome. awesome. That's nice. Yeah, these are, yeah, these the, are nice. uh, the first round of passenger cars uh, that were, what, uh, catalog or so ago now, those those will have that in it as well. Uh, and we tested the samples, and they, they work great. Nice. All right. We got some uh, bay window cabooses. Uh, yes. Uh, bay windows, again, uh, matching some of the locomotives from this and uh, the previous catalogs with the, the variety of service, uh, pride and service and heritage units. Uh, a a nice compliment to bring up the uh, the locomotive at the front of the train for those who like to have uh, a matched pairing, even though the, the caboose might not be uh, what you think of in terms of having a match uh, with a modern diesel. Uh, it's In model train worlds, it's still not a finished train until you, you put a caboose on the end of it. So we did some to match the 3SX, uh, 3CSX uh, paint schemes we did a short while ago, as well as the BNSF uh, anniversary uh, the CN and the CP uh, veteran schemes here as well. The the CP was a bit of a challenge. We tried to pull a, a bit of a color scheme from each of the locomotives into that caboose so that it it, it, ma- it matched no matter which one you would pair it with. That BNSF uh, caboose is pretty sharp looking. I like that. Yeah, I'm glad to see the anniversary caboose on there. That'll match well with the ES44 yeah. anniversary engine well we, we've entered the the standard o portion of the catalog and this is uh, a line that we sort of tried to, to beef up over the last couple of the years to provide a more budgetary friendly uh alternative for for things that are still scale sized and proportioned uh but less detailed than the the scale cars you've seen earlier in the catalog uh there are several pages of these here some of these have been featured previously uh but we we built these on a larger quantity so that we weren't uh running out of stock so quickly uh, intentionally and wanted to refeature some of these here. So uh, we've got the, the rotary gondolas. Uh, these are uh, there was a whole long saga of, of getting these remade and brought back into the line. Uh, but a variety of, of uh, great road names here in uh, mostly in four packs. We've got a couple of two packs there as well. Uh, the ore cars, uh, like you saw earlier with the ore train set uh, in some, some more road names uh, and then the next couple of pages, uh, bringing back in here, our standard uh, center beam flat cars, pulpwood cars, uh, flat cars with loads, uh, insulated box cars, the, the standard O uh, modern box and, and coil gondolas. Uh, so a lot of cars that when you you know you're putting together a long train and the things are whizzing by uh, at, at speed, you don't necessarily always appreciate the separate grab irons and uh, brake rigging on the underside. Uh, but a good paint scheme and a well-proportioned car goes a long way. So the ability to fill out a train with some uh, $50 cars instead of uh, $80, $90 cars is, is always a welcome uh, addition in there. Are these are, are these made from Lionel tooling or are they X-Weaver or, or what are these? These are all, uh, everything you see here in this catalog is Lionel tooling. Um, okay. Our Weaver tooling is still here stateside. Okay. Um, and still uh, for our Lion Scale line. And uh, and right now we just have uh, as much work as we can handle to keep up with production uh, in-house with our uh, Made in USA program, which is just a fabulous problem to have uh, that we haven't reintroduced uh, more of those cars in, uh, in in a couple of years now. Yeah, it's nice to see some budget-friendly scale cars uh, 
you know, to, like you said, to fail out of train. So that, that's always nice to see. And for those who have the printed catalog, this is where uh, things seem to come to an abrupt end. And uh, our apologies for that. We It seems like everything is having supply chain problems this year. And uh, believe it or not, paper is one of them. Uh, so in order to get the catalog printed and out in time, we were only able to secure enough paper with our printers to print a, a, a portion of the catalog. Uh, and so we opted to do the, the front half. Uh, but if you're on the, the digital side of things, of course, we've still got about another uh, 150 pages of this beast to go. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, get, uh, let's get rolling with uh, Lion Chief 2.0. We've got some, some great new locomotives in this catalog. Uh, these pick up where our Lion Chief Plus line uh, left off with all the extra added features. Uh, and again, uh, all these now are controllable uh, with, the, with the Base 3. You'll have the new app uh, and ability to uh, interface with these in, in new ways as well. So you can run them with Bluetooth or you can run them with TMCC. We've got our Pacifics back in the lineup here. This is our, our we call our baby Pacific. Uh, it's a smaller locomotive, but still has some great lines and um, a beefy engine uh, in a variety of, of colorful paint schemes. Um, all of which are, are based in, um, in some prototypical realism as well. So uh, really colorful engines and uh, fun locomotives. Lion Chief uh, 2.0 gives you sort of the best of all worlds. You have command control, you have Bluetooth control, you've got uh, sort of a, a legacy light uh, type of locomotive that has more features than a traditional steam engine or diesel for sure, uh, but not quite all the bells and whistles of a full-on legacy engine. Uh, and at a, a smaller price point. So these steam engines are all die cast. They're great pullers. They're great runners. They have good slow speed performance, good sounds, uh, good smoke. Um, and they're, they're perfect for those who are, are growing their way up into the hobby. Also perfect for folks with smaller layouts and tighter curves, uh, as these will all do an 031 curve without any problem. Yeah, these are great little engines. And I do want to point something out that uh, these Lion Sheep Plus 2.0 engines, just they sound fantastic. Uh, and some of them are almost indistinguishable from like legacy sounds, to be honest with you. Like even the um, I had the Lion Chief Plus 2.0 uh, Lion Master Big Boy uh, and I had a, uh, you know, I have the little uh, little tank engine uh, from from a few catalogs ago. And uh, the sounds in those are just absolutely spot on. Um, and like I said, like to most people, sometimes it's almost indistinguishable from like legacy sounds. So I, I give huge kudos to uh to the lion chief plus 2.0 uh kind of product line I, I think it's i think it's fantastic and i think it's a great entry point for people that aren't into scale or don't want to you know spend money for scale but want a nice you know just kind of steam engine or diesel engine uh, on their layout that just runs awesome sounds great and the fact that you have multiple ways to control it uh, especially now too with the uh, the cab three too as well is just is just a huge plus. Yeah, plus one on these. Um, I know I mentioned the last one, the 06 OT, and uh, any of these 2.0 engines. These things are fantastic. Like Matt said, you almost cannot tell the difference between this and a legacy engine. They just they sound fantastic, and they run great as well. Totally agree with you guys on that one. Wonderful engines, great for the, what they are. The sounds are amazing. They, they definitely pull their weight. And if you're a person who's either trying to move up from just basic Lion Chief to the next step and want to test, uh, test waters with command control, this is definitely the way to do it. I, I can't recommend this product line enough. All right, let's move on to uh, page 102, which uh, has some really cool-looking Hudsons. Yes, these are uh, back again from the, uh, the last catalog. And one of the other nice things that we do try and do with our, our LC2 line um, is we do build a little bit more than not just build the order. So uh, sometimes they sell out real quickly um, and, and they don't last long, uh, but we we don't build these strictly to order so that uh, we know that this is a, an audience for these that might be uh, a little more on the fence or a little bit more patient about their buying. So we like to have some of these for, for dealers to be able to pick up and continue to offer into the hobby. Um, this Hudson, very similar size to the Pacific uh, and, and all the same great features. Uh, and it's just one of those classic uh, Lionel locomotives that uh, you, you got to have uh, in, in the catalog. I, I think it's one we could continue to run over and over again. People never get sick of it. Uh, so uh, if, you, if, you, if a Hudson's more your thing than the Pacific, we've got you covered. Uh, we've also got some great new GP20s uh, in the catalog as well, four road names on these. 
Uh, these have a, a stamped metal frame. They have smoke. They have sound. They have uh, the directional headlighting. Uh, and so uh, a big step up uh, in power and performance and features from uh, similar sized engines that you would find in uh, an O-Gage starter set. Yeah, these are uh, these are great. And again, you know, steam, diesel, Line G Plus 2.0 is, is definitely, a, a, you know, a home run in that department. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to page 105, which uh, has uh, definitely something really cool and definitely something unexpected. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know that a lot of people expected uh, us to, to pick up this tooling uh, from MTH, but uh, the doodle bug is just a, a fun one. And uh, I'm glad we can add something like this into the Lionel uh, catalog. Uh, we'll be putting a lot of great features into these. Obviously, as a Lion Chief plus 2.0 engine, you have the Bluetooth and command control. You'll have uh, the fan-driven smoke, the directional lighting, uh, electrocouplers on this. Uh, traditionally, doodle bugs didn't pull too much, uh, but they, they could tow a car or two, and, and this will have enough power to, to do that. Uh, so uh, great product and one that we're going to have a lot of uh, road name options on down the road. You'll also see a couple of more of these further back in the catalog in our uh, theme sections for Halloween and Christmas and some really great uh, deco schemes on those as well. Yeah, I'm just gonna say you definitely got me on the Santa Fe one. Like, uh, you know, plus you've uh, you've you've taken the tooling, you've added smoke onto there, and uh, that's that's to me that's like, just really really awesome. Like these these are great looking. I was very very excited. Like when I turned to the page and I saw these, I'm like, are you uh, like wow? Like this is great. I it just I was totally yeah. surprised, but I was just like very very happy to see these. I've been. I've been actually looking for Santa Fe dual, dual bug, uh, you know, something that, that's command control for a long time, and uh, they're kind of hard to find. So it's great to see one in your in your catalog, and it's great to see one at the at, at a great price too. I'll be honest yeah. with you, like that's that's a stellar price for mm-hmm. all of the features that are packed in there. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Are these going to have like announcements, like st- station stop announcements? These will have uh, our our. Typical level of sounds for an LC 2.0 project. Uh, so they will have announcements, uh, but they won't all be uh, road or station specific. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a little, it's a, and there'll be fewer announcements than you would get with a full legacy locomotive. Um, more than the, you would have with uh, the older Lion Chief Plus or certainly than the, the traditional sets. Uh, so they will have announcements, but they won't be um, uh, uniquely specific to each uh, each scheme for the the Christmas and the Halloween we'll do our special voices and uh, and different announcement sound sets in those than the the four pictured here on this page of course cool all right sweet kind of kind of piggybacking off of uh, what Matt R said in terms of his quest for one of these Santa Fe doodle bugs uh, I've been going to train shows with Matt for a decent amount of time at this point and without fail every single time we go to our local show he'll see a rail king box that says Santa Fe doodle bug and he will rush over to it, really excited, pick it up, and realize it's a Proto One, and then immediately gets disappointed because it's not command control. So for the fact to see these in the catalog, I bet I bet Matt is over the moon to see this. Yeah, yeah, I, I think this actually might be my favorite item in the catalog. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is something I've wanted to add for years, and I'm really really happy to see it in there. And that Santa Fe one is sharp. I like that. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and move into some uh, not new but uh, some additional paint schemes, right, for the Genesis. Yes, additional paint schemes for the uh, Amtrak Genesis um, with the the variety of uh, anniversary paint schemes that Amtrak has done. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we we captured those as well. So these uh, will arrive later this year. Uh, just some really beautiful paint schemes, and again, uh, thanks to Matt and everyone at Amtrak. Uh, for not only putting the program together in real life, but for making it uh, so much easier for us to help uh, everyone recapture it on your your model layouts. And we've we've made so many upgrades to to this tooling from uh, MTH to add features into it uh, to really bring it into uh, you know the level of product that we felt it deserved uh, to, to be for for a locomotive like this. Uh, and very happy with the way these are turning out. So. Uh, for those who will be at Springfield in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll actually have a few samples, uh, deco samples of some of these with us, I believe. So stop by and check them out. They look amazing. That's great. And you have uh, on page uh, 106, it looks like we have a uh, an Amtrak Genesis Lion Chief Plus 2.0 set, which 
uh, has. Looks like you the return of your uh, your eighteen inch uh, passenger cars, Amtrak passenger cars, which uh, I actually really love those passenger cars. Yes, it, it was, as soon as we unveiled the the P forties a, a couple of catalogs ago, it was almost like an immediate storm of one of the, the AM fleets coming back. We need AM fleets. Uh, so, uh, we have them here, we've got a set and you'll see some more separate sale cars on the, the next couple of pages. Um, they are 18 inch cars. They're, you know, they're not quite full length like our 21 inch cars are, but we really probably could have put these just up in the, in the scale section of the catalog just as easily, uh, for people. And they would look just as good running behind those F40 PHs, uh, as they will behind these, um, sort of semi-scale, uh, Genesis locomotives. Uh, but we've got a, a really cool set uh, to start it all off there in the uh, the matching current with the, with the current paint scheme. Uh, this these have the the two coaches and then the cab car at the the back end if you want to do a, a push pull train. Uh, and then we'll see matching cars for a variety of paint schemes in a variety of eras, both with the uh, straight two packs of the passenger cars and then a two pack with the coach and the cab car as well. Uh, some of the cab cars never wore uh, some of those paint schemes, but we we put them in there anyway, just so people would have a, a neat uh, matching concept. Love seeing the cab cars. I remember the last cab car. It was it was definitely very difficult to find. They were, became very popular, and uh, I really love seeing that you guys brought back the cab cars and in different flavors too. So that's really cool. These are really nice. I um, uh, I was just curious on the cab car. Um, uh, one thing that I think would be kind of neat is if you were to bring these with the legacy electronics, with like the uh, how you did with the F40s, with it where it changes the direction, uh, that'd be something cool to think about. I don't know if that's in the works or not, but either way, beautiful cars. Yeah, definitely a possibility for the future. Cool. So for these cars, I am ridiculously excited about these. Uh, I these are such beautiful cars and when the atlas catalog dropped not too long ago folks were not were either really overjoyed by their am fleets but there was a definitely a crave for more prototypical paint schemes and being a person who ordered the atlas genesis um seeing these cars coming from you guys was an absolute treat i genuinely got giddy when i saw this so i will definitely be snagging a two-pack um, probably the cab car. Uh, one thing that uh, I was very impressed by is the cab car is still the same price as the normal two pack. That genuinely impressed me. Um, so I will definitely be considering getting the cab car two pack because why not? <laughs> so <laughs> great job with these cars. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on to page 110, which has a pretty cool uh, Pensy S2 Lion Chief Plus 2.0 set. Yeah, this is a, a great new set. Uh, we've, we've done a few of these uh, 2.0 sets in the past. There's a few that you'll see on the subsequent pages that are, that are coming back in. Uh, we still have some, some around. Uh, a, a nice sort of mid, mid-range between your starter set and those big, gigantic legacy sets we looked at earlier, uh, where you get a locomotive that's, uh, in these cases, you know, semi-scale, but has a lot of great features uh, on board. Uh, and, and several pieces of rolling stock that all, all tie together into a, a nice theme. And uh, the Pensy S2 is a, a good one um, with, you know, again, some of the, uh, the newer tooling from MTH mixed with uh, some parts and, and pieces from things we already had here to, to create a new new set, um, which uh, you know, Pennsylvania is always just bound to be uh, one of our, our most popular road names. So uh, time to bring back a, a nice uh, set here as well. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and we're going to kind of fly through the catalog here. We're not going to hit on um, anything that's obviously just returning. Uh, but Ryan, if you want to maybe just take us through and just maybe hit on some uh, some new items in the catalog, we can just go over those. Absolutely. So um, this is we're getting to a, into our uh, more traditional uh, section of the catalog where we have a lot of licensed product. Uh, and these are products that you know are often designed towards the first timer in the hobby. And so, uh, uh, it's, if it's your first train set, it's 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 new to you, whether it's the first time we've shown it in the catalog or the tenth time we've shown it in the catalog. Uh, but what you will see as you're flipping through here, um, you know, take some time and, and don't glance through everything because there are some new pieces of add-on rolling stock for some of them uh, that fit in some of these themes um, and uh, and great additions. So, for example, on the Toy Story. Uh, page on page 116 we have a new uh walking woody 
uh, Brakeman car uh, here that matches with the Toy Story sets, uh, but would also stand alone great uh, if you're just a, a Toy Story fran- uh, fan and, and want to add that in with your, your regular consist. Um, we've got some, some great new uh, Pixar licensed rolling stock um, as well. Um, I really like the uh, Monsters, Inc. scare tank car with the LEDs on the side. Uh, this is going to be a fun car um, because the, the it will be voice activated, so uh, noise activated, I should say. So the, the louder the noise, the more LEDs will light up on the side of the, the canister. Uh, and a fun piece that, that ties in a, a connection with the, the film uh, and, and the fun of the train. That's great. Uh, that, that's that's, really, that's cool. a really neat effect that you put on there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> We've got uh, some great new Halloween rolling stock uh, and accessories as well as we get back into the, the Hallow's Eve set. Uh, this is a fun one that uh, also has a lighted boxcar uh, in there that doesn't, uh, a lot of people didn't, didn't realize that, but we, we showed that at York for the first time in October and uh, people really fell in love with it. So uh, it's a great, one of our newer sets that's, uh, that's coming back around for another year and uh, a great set with lots of great add-ons. Uh, the whole Halloween theme has just really grown and grown for us over the last couple of years. Uh, and we've got a lot of uh, creative people here on staff, too, who, who get into it, and it makes it uh, fun for them uh, to, to add in and add their their creativity. Uh, we've got the, the uh, Grimm's Repo Depot uh, transfer terminal there. That's a new accessory for us from the MTH tooling, a uh, new animated accessory with some, some great graphics. Uh, check out the dimensions on this thing. It's much bigger in person than it, than it appears in the catalog uh, and a, a really fun piece to add into your uh, layout. We've, we've updated all those accessories with our plug expand play to make them easier to uh, set up and, and join in on, on your layout if you're just getting started. Or if you're uh, like a lot of us and uh, you've been in the hobby for years, but you still set up and take down your trains or can't decide where you want this or that or, or change out themed accessories from one season to the next, uh, those plug expand play connections make that so much easier than going around and uh, changing wires out underneath the layout. Some some great uh, new Halloween rolling stock uh, on the next uh, couple of pages here as well. I, I think we're up to page 128 and 129. Uh, some some lighted and sound equipped cars. Uh, we've got the 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 doodle bug here again uh, with some some wonderful graphics on that, and then um, the mint car that we have we've, we've got new tech uh new printing technologies that we've been using we started on the star trek set uh, about a year or two ago uh that has a lenticular design so that depending on which angle you're looking through the windows at you'll either see or not see the ghosts uh in the scene so they'll sort of appear and disappear uh, as the train rolls by it which is uh, going to be a really neat effect in that car that's cool yeah i like the halloween doodle bug <laughs> yeah, we've got uh you know so, some more uh more fun accessories for Halloween too, um, and, and I, if I'm moving quickly, I, I can I can pause and let you guys chime in here. You know, I, I think a lot of us on the call tonight are, you know, into the scale end of things, uh, and probably a lot of your listeners are too. But this hobby is just a lot of fun, and sometimes it's neat to st- take a step back and just have some fun with things and, and look at the traditional side of the world, and uh, and even mix and match these with some of our more scale and realistic trains. Uh, and just have some fun for a change. I was curious on the rocket launcher. Ah, yes, the rocket launcher. So this is another one of those great classic Lionel accessories that is making a comeback uh, with a lot of uh, engineering time going into this. Also much larger in real life than it appears in the catalog. This thing is is, uh, pretty substantial. Um, we will be doing away with the uh, wonderful 1970s Atari game system control console that came with it uh, originally, <laughs> uh, and it will all be uh, controllable through, uh, through command control um, with uh, launch announcements, uh, smoke, uh, LED lights. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Of course, the rocket itself actually does uh, fire off. Um, just a, a really neat accessory, uh, and one that would go great with the, the sets and other things you see here, or just, uh, on the, on the layout. Uh, this is a really fun one. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with it in engineering too, uh, playing with it, but, uh, this is going to be one of those great accessories that captures sort of the, uh, one of those great bygone eras of Lionel, uh, with today's, uh, improvements and technology to, to make the accessory that much better but still capturing that uh, flavor of the original. 
Uh, and and that control console, I, I joke about it, but it really was part of the charm of the the accessory and, and seeing yeah. that and looking at it, going, "Oh my gosh, this this was the state of the art the first time this came out." And Comes with real better now. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that becomes a demos a demo with Dave. Yeah, item. I'm totally into that. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely, absolutely. You will see it. This was a demos with Dave item as it uh, as it awesome. progresses. But you know that that. Uh... That rocket launch pad is absolutely amazing. The fact that it's been upgraded for modern standards is amazing. I uh, can't wait to see the demo. And hopefully this can be something we can see more from Lionel, stuff like that. Uh, we definitely would love to see an upgrade, a, a line of more upgraded, modernized products for the for the hobby because they're just fun. I mean, who wouldn't want those? I know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Let's not let's not forget the the NASA train in the back, though. I mean, that, that thing, true. to me, that thing's cool. I mean, I like, I like anything with NASA on it. So, I mean, that's... Uh, that's a great touch to that. Yep. A scale yeah, version bu- to launch. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy that train set, you definitely have to buy the the rocket launch pad. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Make a whole space theme layout. Exactly. Yep. All right. What do we have? Uh, what do we have next? All right. Well, from uh, from outer space to um, cracking open a, a cold one, uh, we've got our, uh, our our next uh, train set in the in the Anheuser Busch series. Uh, more of a classic. Uh, throwback look uh, for our, our next uh, Anheuser Busch uh, Budweiser set here, uh, along with several accessories uh, or, and pieces of rolling stock to, to go along with it. Uh, a few new um, uh, refrigerator cars, which which work off of um, classic uh, advertising and the uh, annual Budweiser holiday steins, and then the uh, I think it's a, a pretty cool design too that the unibody tank car. Uh, with, of course, in the in the look of a, a beer can wrap with the simulated pool tab, be, uh, even at the one end, uh, there is, is, is a pretty cool piece. Um, this has been a, a popular license for us. Um, of course, these are all geared towards uh, adults, uh, and we, we encourage everybody to train responsibly. Uh, but uh, really fun, uh, really fun pieces. The uh, accessory down there, too, will have the, the lighted sign on the roof uh, for the Budweiser Brewery. Uh, which is going to be a really eye-catching uh, and popping accessory on the layout. So, uh, very excited about these um, and uh, continuing this this train line. That's a, the brewery's XMTH, correct? Correct. All right, cool. And is that sign? Is that going to be like a like a neon sign? Or is it just going to be on? It'll be a, like a lighted, uh, sort of like a neon style uh, stand-up sign on the on the roof. It won't be just. Uh, you know, a, a cardboard sign with a light spot lighted on it. It'll be a, an illuminated sign. Question two on the brewery. I have the MTH one. It has a smoke unit in it. Is this one going to smoke? Um, I don't think we plan to put a smoke unit in this one. It's something we could probably look at down the road, but uh, I don't think we have planned to put one in here. Uh, yeah, just really quick for me. I, I really love that vintage uh, Clydesdale reefer. That, that's That's beautiful. I love that print on there with the Clydesdales. That is really sharp looking. Yeah, personally, I'd have to agree. I think that's one of the, the neatest looking uh, reefers we've done. And it's it's kind of a neat blending of, although it's not based on a specific prototype, obviously, you sort of capture right. the spirit of the billboard reefer era with the actual period advertising art. So it, it works. Yeah, even even the Anheuser-Busch logo on the, on the door is just like a really cool added touch to that one. Oh, it looks like we have uh, next page. We have some uh, some more beer Budweiser stuff. Yes, yeah, so the continuation of the, the series, uh, these are some other cars that have, have popped up in uh, the last couple of catalogs. Uh, some based very much on, on period cars, like the uh, malt nutrient car down there at the bottom of page 137. Uh, others all picking up on period advertising from, from various periods in the, in the licensing. And it's, it's really cool working with some of these licensors like uh, Anheuser-Busch, uh, because they give you access to a lot of the things they've digitized from their own archives. Uh, and so it's fun going back and just looking and seeing at, at some of the things that have been done uh, over the decades and how advertising has changed and uh, and the branding has changed. All right, let's uh, go ahead and move into this. Um, uh, actually, this looks really cool. This great locomotive chase Lion Chief set. Yeah, so this is the uh, the anniversary, the 150th anniversary year of the uh, Great Locomotive Trace um, in 1862. Sorry, 160th anniversary year, not 150th. Um, and so we wanted to commemorate that. Um, one of the, the people who I, I, I worked with in the past, a great friend of mine, uh, Steve Miola, is a uh, sort of nationally known expert on the general and the Texas 
uh, and has done years of research on these locomotives. And so we worked with him to bring these engines back. Um, but really, I think probably for the first time as an O-gauge Lionel engine, not in the uh, restored colors of the locomotives, but the color schemes that they uh, actually would have worn at the time of the real great locomotive chase. So that uh, that apple green uh, and dark green with the Russia iron boiler on uh, the general just really radically different, I think, than most people are used to seeing with it. Uh, but much more like this engine really would have appeared. And then also the, the more subdued, but still uh, great colors on the Texas. So we're, we're doing these two locomotives as they were. Similar to the set we did uh, two years ago for the Golden Spike, uh, the, the two locomotives will come in a gift box uh, with a universal remote, so you can control both from the, the same remote. Uh, and then we've got an add-on uh, set of three cars um, to, to put with them if you want to put some cars behind uh, the trains uh, in uh, appropriate uh, 1860s uh, deco schemes, which were, unlike the locomotives, very plain and simple. All the effort was spent on the motive power, uh, practically none in making the rolling stock look pretty. That's cool. So basically, these are just um, the the UP set from a couple catalogs ago, right? In in terms of features uh, and and, and whatnot, yes. uh, Same locomotive, obviously new deco, and of course, new sound sets uh, in there as well for the two locomotives. Great. That's that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, Yeah, I, I have that that set from a couple years ago and i love it um it's really cool i'll probably look at getting this one too yeah these are great i I know a lot uh i know a lot of people are going to be very excited about these and uh it's it's just a beautiful set overall yeah it looks great yeah it's interesting Uh, i'm sure steve won't mind me sharing this but his love of trains started with a lionel general when he was a kid and so on a personal note this kind of brings it full circle um, you know, being able to, to redo the, the Lionel General on the anniversary of the, the Great Locomotive Chase in accurate colors, uh, researched by a historian whose love affair with the history of the train started with the Lionel General uh, is, is just kind of a neat chapter in, in what we do and, and the long history of this company and this hobby and this business. Uh, and it's just neat to be part of that. Song. It gives it a very personal touch, indeed. Well, in the next spread, we've got a uh, traditional Lionel, sort of traditional Lionel Scout uh, type of set. And the one thing I want to point out here on the the Lionel line set is that uh, all of our sets to this point have included a remote control. This is the the first set and the only set that you'll find in this catalog in the Lion Chief line that doesn't include its own remote. Uh, So you'll run this either with the, the app on your phone that you can download for free, of course, uh, or with uh, the universal remote, or once you get the, the base three, you could run it with your legacy control system if you wanted. Uh, but we wanted to uh, toss this out and sort of test the waters uh, for a lot of our market uh, where uh, the cell phones are now in, in everyone's hands so commonly, uh, and people have, have gotten to using the apps so customarily that we wanted to produce one set uh, without the remote to help take cost down a little bit uh, and, and test the waters on this as a uh, potential set. Certainly does not mean that all Lionel train sets in the future will be remote free. Uh, but uh, we wanted to give uh, the option out there, especially for uh, a lot of sets which are sold online. Uh, and again, to first comers into the hobby where uh, the idea that you can run it with a cell phone uh, is a big plus and a big feature to making toy trains modern again. And then we get to the graffiti set. Uh, we talked about these in the, in the scale line and, uh, and how popular they are. And we've had a lot of people pushing us to do something in the traditional world for a while. So we, we created a whole line of, uh, uh, of graffiti locomotives and cars. Uh, there's an add-on boxcar there, too, if you want to uh, take it a little bit further. Um, each side of the train is unique uh, with, with different graffiti. Uh, which is all done by our, our creative team in-house uh, here. And just a really fun and colorful train set uh, using the uh, former MTH-8 uh, wide cab tooling here for the locomotive. This is great. I, I, I absolutely love this. Like someone was had a, someone definitely had a field day with this, right? Like I, could, I couldn't imagine the, the meeting for this one and be like, well, so I want to make a train, but it's just all graffiti. And people are like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> so this is this is great. I, yeah. I love this. 
Yeah, you know what? Yeah. And I think like yeah. kids too. You know, kids will see this and be like, "Oh, this is cool. Look at all this like, you know, this graffiti art like painted on the on the side of these." And obviously, there's you know a couple of add-on add-on box cars as well. Uh, yeah, this is just um, this is cool. I, I I really like this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this one definitely stands out. Um, you get you you like I said, you occasionally get pieces of graffiti rolling stock, but to just go head first and just go everything from engine to <laughs> to, to the uh, to the end of train device, or you know, in terms of modern trains, like it's from it's all graffiti, and a lot of these cars, especially like the tank car, you could slip that into a a scale train, and you probably wouldn't know the difference. So yep. beautiful set. Mm-hmm. We've also got a, another new set in here uh, and some new accessories too. The uh, the Lion Chief Bluetooth uh, 5.0 uh, emergency response set. Uh, this one's literally got all the bells and whistles in it. Uh, so you've got the lights in all the cars, strobes, flashing lights. Uh, there'll be fun sounds in the in locomotive, of course. Uh, we've repurposed the the tank car derailment as a um, a fire a fire department training uh, center car. Uh, and our, our creative team actually went down the uh, down the road from us and uh, to the local fire department, uh, and we did 360 photos of uh, the, the fire crew there in their their getup to to make the new uh, masters for the figures for this. So that was a lot of fun uh, partnering with those guys. Uh, the name on the uh, the tank car and in, in the accessory actually comes from the, the fire chief there. It's uh, his last name uh, done in, into incorporating it in as sort of a way to say thank you to him. And then um, another former MTH accessory, but one of the coolest ones I think they've done, uh, the fire station uh, coming back here uh, as a great animated accessory into the line. That's cool. I, I like the, I really like the story behind that, too. Yeah, that's yeah. a really cool. I like the searchlight police car yeah, in the, cool. in, at the end of the train. Yeah, that, that p- searchlight police car looks like a repurposed box cab or something. Uh, can't quite p- place it like an old... I thought the same thing. I looked at it and I'm like, wow, that's just like what that yeah, that tooling has been around for a while. Um it's been used as a box cab loco, it's been used as the the command center caboose and some of the military sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, with a okay. machine gun on the roof. Uh, I think uh, yeah. <laughs> variety of variety of classic uh Lionel tooling that uh, has seen a lot of uses. Uh, I'm half tempted one of these years to make it a box cab again and just see what we come up with on it. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. I'd love to see that. Of course, we've got some more uh, separate set of rolling stock that's new, but um, to get into the, the Lion Chief uh, separate sale diesels here, we've got the return of the the 44 tonner, which is not really a 44 tonner. It's probably more close to an 85 tonner if we were matching it to a specific prototype. <laughs> um, and the uh, but but still semi prototype based uh, along that lines. And then the um, the former MTH dash uh, eight here in the catalog as well in in four uh, contemporary paint schemes. Uh, for the for the 44 tonner, we we went sort of both sides. Some of the paint schemes are based off of 44 tonner uh, paint schemes. There are a few like the uh, the Ford locomotive that's actually based off of a prototype engine more similar in size to our model than an actual 44 tonner. So uh, it, it worked both ways there. And uh, neat to have that engine back in the lineup. It's a fairly simple locomotive, uh, but we like having some engines at the uh, lower end of the, the price points uh, with the basic starter set features so that there's something uh, very accessible and cool and fun to run uh, to add on to your, your starter sets and keep you going. Those are cool and uh, great, great, great price point on those two for just, you know, line chief, you know, you got cool little, uh, cool little engine, you got a remote sounds, lights, and um, they're actually pretty, pretty decently detailed too. Then you got those dash eights or those, uh, those are the MTH. Wide yeah, so ones. Those are the MTH ones. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> That's cool. All right, next page looks like we have some U36Bs. Yep, some, some classic U36Bs. Again, are, are you know similar to our starter set locomotives in, in features. Uh, so you don't have quite as fine a speed control, uh, but you do still have sound with the, the, the dialogue and the horn and the bell, uh, directional lighting and so forth. So a, a fun locomotive, great value for the for the price. And then our um, our trolleys, and I, I just I just got to call out the trippy trolley. Yep, uh, I love one, that this one. This one's really <laughs> fun uh, for all you uh, grown up hippies out there. Uh, this one is uh, just a really fun piece, and we we had just fun doing it. We also put some uh, ground light effects in this one to 
to just <laughs> take it to the next level. That's hilarious. That's awesome. I, I love it. That yeah, thing's I'm, so cool. I'm definitely going to order that. Yeah, that I, I thought that was really cool. That definitely caught mm-hmm. my attention. I'm like, wait, the trippy trolley, and then it's like, oh, it's got illumination too. I'm like, yeah, uh, this is fantastic. <laughs> I just saw the color. I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I saw lights. I'm like, oh, no kidding. Holy smoke. This is something, <laughs> you know, wow. And that's from the, that's the Rail King bump and go trolley, right? Uh, no, that's the old Lionel uh, bump and go. Okay. 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 We've had for a while. Yep. Okay. Um, cool. Yep. And the interior lights in there too will be a multicolor LED. So it'll, it'll change <laughs> colors as it's going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. oh, that's going to be awesome. I'm <laughs> definitely cool. in for that. I like that. You know, blast. We're gonna party. We we like to party, Matt. Absolutely, there. buddy. You know it. Come on now. Come on. That that is the. If I'm gonna do it, that's the piece to do it with. Come on now. <laughs> I suppose I can support that. Good. At least once, please. <laughs> I guess I'll let it slide. All right. And uh, what what else do we have new moving on here? Uh, we've got a lot of new licensed rolling stock. Uh, jump ahead a couple of pages to 160 and 161. We've got uh, the continuation of the, the classic Lionel series from Angela Trotta Thomas. Um, she's been doing some wonderful artwork uh, for these boxcars featuring uh, some of the most iconic Lionel locomotives um, through history. So we're adding the, the New York Central F3s and the uh, the Blue Comet uh, here for this year. We've also got some great licensed Ford and Chevy uh, product here uh, with the Mustang and the Camaro and the, uh, the TOFC traditional boxcars. Uh, so some, some great uh, add-ons there, uh, as well as continuations in our series with uh, Miller Coors or now Molson Coors uh, and the, uh, the Wings of Angels uh pinup art series uh and the uh uh battlefield of honor series as well with uh, uh two new cars there uh and then uh some patriotic cars as well here in the traditional side uh of things with uh light up flag and then the uh illuminated fireworks uh car uh, which also plays uh music so that'll be a lot of a lot of fun on on, on layouts uh, and piggybacking off of some of the work that we designed for the, the Christmas light express, uh, over the last couple of years, um, trying to extend those lights and, and technologies into new places and new ways, uh, cause the cars are just so much fun. Yeah. The, um, firework car is really cool. I remember, um, kind of looking at this and getting a throwback to the, uh, Christmas vacation car you did with, uh, Clark's house on, uh, all lit up. Yes. Uh, that instantly reminded me of that. This is really cool. All right, and we've got a few more uh, a few more precedents as well, uh, and the continuation of the uh, historic railroad uh, railroad history collection uh, with the anniversary of the train of tomorrow and uh, of Rockville Bridge, uh, celebrating a, a, a big anniversary there as well. The, the completion of that that Stone Arch Bridge. So, another fun series that we've been uh, building on for the last couple of years uh, as well uh, with with our traditional rolling stock. So. Uh, just so much fun to be had in in this part of the catalog really i see uh i see the shark fin car down below too so i like that one a lot that's really funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah that yeah. one's cool unfortunately we couldn't get enough orders to build the set when we cataloged it a few years ago but everyone raved over the car and uh we said that the concept had to live on because uh just the neatest use of the walkman breaking uh walking brakeman car ever <laughs> absolutely absolutely shark car for your sharks maybe for, for your scale sharks, who knows? There you go. <laughs> sure, there you go. <laughs> okay, folks. Well, that wraps up the Lion Chief Plus 2.0 and some of the other Lion Chief sets uh, that we wanted to hit on. Uh, again, there's a lot more in the catalog, a lot of things that that are obviously stuff that, that have been previous catalogs. Uh, obviously, feel, feel free to go through everything. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in here. And I think overall, you know, my opinion on, on this catalog, uh, it, it's – you know, the whole entire thing, it's been fantastic. There's a lot of stuff in here I am super excited for. As a BNSF guy, I'm looking forward to uh, pre-ordering a lot of things out of this catalog, for sure. Um, definitely a lot of things up my alley. So um, let me just, I wanted to kind of go around the room and just from the guys on here, Eric and and um, Matt and Johnny, just to get your really quick thoughts on, on your kind of opinions on the catalog. Uh, Eric, why don't you start? Um, I think it's great. Uh, you know, I... I think it's got a lot of 
nice new stuff in there. Um, I kind of said this earlier today when we were talking, but um, I think it's a nice mixture of stuff where it's it, it's a really good, ca- it's really strong, good catalog uh, that's got a lot of stuff that I like. But it, it, it kind of sounded funny when we were saying this earlier today, but I said I like it because it's good, but it's not too good. Like there's been some cat line of catalogs in the past where it's almost too good. There's so much stuff. You're just like an overload. And I like that this one has a nice balance of just really good, you know, a lot of new stuff, but a lot of just nice stuff that's reappearing again in case you missed it the first time and in some new paint schemes and so forth. And uh, so I'm really happy with it. I think it's a strong catalog and uh, uh, can't wait to get my orders in. Uh, Matt Z, how about yourself? I really like it. I think, you know, to like what Eric said, you know, it's, it's good. It's, you know, not too good, but it's, it's good. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and there's some stuff in here that I'm really overly excited about the uh, switchers in particular, whether it be steam or that gorgeous SW one. Thank God. Smoke and pi- fix pilots. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely one of my favorite things in this new catalog. Yeah, is that SW that, one. Is that one just, Oh God. I, I love it. Um, but no, uh, I think it was really cool. Um, great, great picks in here, Ryan, um, for a little bit of everything for everybody. And I I think that's, it's a very well-rounded catalog and that, that is really something that's, you know, nice to see for sure. So it's well-rounded in terms of what's, what's featured and also well-rounded in terms of, you know, hits to your wallet. You know, it's not all super (laughs) high priced. It's not all super low end. It's, it's a nice mixture of everything. Absolutely. Uh, Johnny, how about yourself? I genuinely really enjoyed this catalog. Uh, lots of great items. I definitely, for myself personally, I guaranteed going to get both uh, variations of the Ski Train F40. The M fleets were a very welcome surprise. I, I genuinely got very excited when I saw those, so I will also be snagging those up. But lots of great paint schemes. I loved hearing the stories behind where everything was chosen. It all makes sense. It makes me actually more excited for a lot of the items that are on there. So um, great catalog. Great to look at. And I know folks, when they when they get a chance to go through on their own, will will be over the moon about it. Absolutely. So First thing first, before we get into, uh, uh, you know, where we can find people again, just huge thank you to Ryan for uh, taking the time to come on our show uh, and uh, take us through the catalog. This was so exciting, if not probably the best episode that we've done uh, so far, just because of the fact that we had uh, Ryan from Lionel and we had Eric from Eric's Trains on here, uh, which makes this a super special episode for us. So really, we're really excited about the future for our podcast. We definitely want to do this again. Hopefully, if Ryan and Eric are available again, uh, we'll definitely uh, would love to do additional catalogs uh, moving forward. I wanted to kind of give the floor to Ryan uh, just for a minute, if you had any thoughts or anything. Well, thank you very much uh, to, to Matt and to everybody here. Uh, this is the pleasure's really been been all mine. Uh, we, as a team, we work on this catalog for for a year and uh, pulling everything together. And I'm very happy to hear everybody say that you find you're finding a, ba- a balance in there because that's uh, one of our biggest challenges is trying to find that that right balance. We want everybody to find at least one or two things uh, that you you know you absolutely want. Uh, and can afford and, uh, and and will add to your collection. Uh, if 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 you if you wanted every single thing in the catalog, it, you, you'd be out of luck. And uh, but we hope that you find every something in there in every catalog that that fits you. Uh, and, and it sounds like from from that end, uh, the whole team here is 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 doing our job right and uh, and making people happy. Uh, it's been a long show. I don't know if it was your best show or not, but it's probably your longest show. And uh, <laughs> I appreciate you all hanging in there. I know there are still uh, some things we didn't cover in the catalog, believe it or not. So uh, for folks who are especially looking for accessories uh, or for some of the holiday themed things, uh, keep paging back through there because there are some um, some new items that are worth taking a look at and adding to your layout all through this, uh, no matter what your your interest level might be in the hobby. So uh, are very happy to be here for the first time. Uh, and I'm sure we will make sure it's not the last time uh, we'll do this for some more catalogs and, and maybe some other uh, updates in between too. Now that we've made the connection, uh, we don't have to try and cram it all into, into one big night. We can, 
we can have fun anytime. So uh, it's been great. And it's just been, uh, it's, as always, it's, it's, it's fun hanging out and talking trains with, with people who, who share the hobby and share the passion. So uh, if nothing else, I've had a fun night doing that. So thank you all for that. Thank awesome. you. Mike. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, just definitely uh, with you guys, with Lionel, definitely don't have to limit this to catalog shows. We would love to even just do uh, do our classic interview with you, Ryan, because, you know, uh, you come on to these, you talk about the catalog, but sometimes we want to know more about the person that's designing the catalog, you know, you yourself. So we would love for you to come back on and, and just let's talk about you, put you under the spotlight and uh, just find out what uh, drives you, in, you know, in this hobby. That'd be, that'd be my pleasure and an honor to do so. Uh, and we'll go from your your longest and best catalog, uh, catalog podcast ever to uh, your shortest and uh, least enjoyable for most people. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I, people, you know, no, people yeah. love our interview shows a lot, uh, especially when we talk about people in the industry. You know, Eric's show was is probably our number one downloaded show, and I actually had to split that up into two. I, I I don't actually think we're at the same time. I think the Eric show might be actually a little longer. So yeah, I went on uh, for a while, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, thanks to both, you know, Ryan and Eric. And, um, as always on this show, we want to make sure that our guests are able to, um, tell people uh, where they can find them. So Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me through Lionel. Uh, you can uh, reach me through any of our social media uh, contact points. Uh, Lionel is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram. Uh, so please check out all of those pages. We do a variety of things and updates uh, unique to each of those channels. Uh, I'm on, I'll be on just about every place uh, we can get over the next couple of weeks as we promote the catalog and get the word out. Uh, you've got until the middle of February to get your orders into your dealers. So as this is being recorded, you've, you've still got uh, plenty of time, but uh, depending on when you're finding this and listening to it, please keep that in mind, especially for the build-to-order items, and get out there and support your favorite uh, local or, or uh, just favorite uh, internet uh, Lionel dealer. Uh, they're a huge part of our family as well, so we appreciate that. And if you have any questions uh, or comments about the catalog, please feel free to reach out to Lionel at 1-800-4-LIONEL or talk to us at lionel.com. And uh, we have a, a very talented and wonderful crew uh, who never gets enough uh, credit for the hard work they do in our call center who will be happy to answer questions directly, or if they can't, they forward everything uh, on to myself or Dave or whomever the most uh, appropriate person is uh, in the building to, to get them and help them get an answer. So uh, as, as always, please feel free to reach out to us uh, and let us know what you're thinking. Uh, it's been really wonderful hearing the feedback uh, from everybody tonight on the catalog and, and what you all love uh, and the questions you've had. Uh, and look forward to hearing that from, from everybody out there listening as well. So thank you. Uh, Eric, how about yourself? Uh, well, if you pull up Google and search Eric's Trains, you'll get every link you need. You can go to my YouTube channel, Eric's Trains, or ericstrains.com. We'll have links to everything on it. And I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. And I really enjoyed doing this. Thanks for having me on. And if anyone you know needs to contact me, uh, my email is eric at ericstrains.com. Excellent. And uh, Johnny, how about yourself? I just want to say thank you to uh, our guests. You guys are really awesome. I am really happy to have been able to get a chance to talk with you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being on our, on this episode. In regards to myself, you can find me at Audemus on YouTube. That's A-U-D-A-M-U-S. Uh, you can find me screaming at inanimate objects and getting boxes thrown in my head and occasionally talking about trains. You can also find me on Instagram at Audemus underscore trains. And you can also find me on the Matt and Matt O'Skill podcast discord. Please reach out, join us, have a talk. We chat in there every other night on voice call and we love talking trains and making a bunch of dumb jokes so we hope to see you there Matt Z. plus one with the thank yous and shout outs and everything guys really appreciate this was bar none my favorite uh really big thanks ryan eric this was great guys uh really appreciate it uh you can find me on youtube and facebook under matt dash train lover 9943 and like with johnny on the uh, matt matt discord server you know talk have fun and, you know, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. So uh, big thanks, everyone. And you can find me on YouTube at West Chicago Monterey Road. I'm on Facebook under the same name. And on Instagram, uh, if you search up WCMRR, 
you will find me. And again, folks, I will put all the appropriate links in the episode notes, which will include the Discord link, you know, links to uh, different ways to find our podcast. Uh, I will put a link to the Lionel catalog. Uh, when Lionel posts it on their website, I will put a link in there so you can easily click it, you know, open up that digital catalog and, and uh, you know, go along with the show with us as we go through it. So uh, with that said, uh, thank you to all our listeners for everything that you do, for downloading our podcast, for giving us your ears, uh, for giving us feedback. We really appreciate it. We love doing this podcast. We love talking about trains. It is our passion. Uh, gentlemen, you all have a wonderful night. And we will talk to you later. Thanks a lot. See you guys.